All right, and we are live with the 23rd episode of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Whoa. Jose. Um, today, not today, just, wait, yes, today, today slash this week. Oh, whoops. I am hearing myself from my phone. It's Sarah's that camera's bad. white. <laughs> what? Oh, it it's is? So Sarah's uh, camera's messed up. It's all no, white. No, my camera's No, my camera's not, not on your end, Uh-oh. on Jose's end. Are we having some technical <laughs> issues? Yeah, look yeah. at the stream. It's all white. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, atten- attention okay. future self in the future where I'm doing future things. Um, make the beginning of this start later. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> please, please, please. There we go. Sorry. Sarah lives. Sarah's uh, alive. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, it's uh, caught up. Uh, uh, it's almost there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, there he is. Mission All accomplished, right. everybody. We can go right. home now. Yay, All right, let's go ahead and bye. do this. Let's do this from the top. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the Game Session Podcast. This is the 23rd episode. I'm your host, uh, Jose slash Seth Rokage. Uh, this week, I'm joined by Sarah, Mesa, Blaine, and returning guest, uh, Sylvia slash Nexus Requiem. How's hey, everyone doing up? today? Uh well we're all here today on this very special sunday to celebrate you know the return of someone that we lost for a while that's right folks jolene cujo part six anime it's coming soon and we're here that's what we're here to celebrate today on this sunday it's not coming (laughs) soon enough though that's my only complaint yeah it could be coming faster it could all right, at the but. top of the show, I just want to go ahead and remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe on everyone's uh, socials, everything they do. Everyone's ads are on screen. Um, does anyone have anything they want to advertise? Uh, I put out a April Fool's article that apparently some people believed, which means I can't tell <laughs> if I did a good job or a bad job. Either or. Of yes. The, <laughs> of the top Pencil five you video games that need m- movies, which include Flappy Bird. Cooking Mama and me turning Mario Kart into a Fast and the Furious clone that apparently some people believed. So if you can go check that out, that, that, that is a talent. <laughs> apparently, people believe the Mario Kart one, to your which skill- I said I wrote this in an hour. Your, <laughs> your skill you basically just be E for everyone, Fast and the Furious, right? Um, no, it's actually an anthology film that explains why everybody in the Mario Kart mm. canon lore races in those damn races. Uh. Your ability, to people tr- believed it. your ability to trick people should uh, help you in that new Among Us map. Uh, I don't know. People always tag me as the killer. <laughs> uh, you can find Game Session Podcast here live Sundays at 6.30pm. You can also find it later on podcast services as well as on YouTube on um, as full episodes and individually cut up segments. Uh, shout out to my two patrons, uh, Ramen Nomad, who is in chat at the moment. Uh, thank you, Ramen. And uh, my buddy Sly. Hell yeah. um, it's a bit of a, it's not even been a bit of a slow news week. Like I was trying to like grasp at straws. Like what's like the least possible news like news thing we can toss in. And there wasn't really anything. <laughs> um, so we have some older stories. We're going to do some fan questions. But at the top of the show, Mesa, what do you think of the Snyder Cut? Um, I oh, thought it Jesus. was really good. It's a testament to how badly someone can ruin a film. Uh, Ray Fisher's parts as Cyborg were fantastic, and I can't believe Zach, uh, not sorry, uh, Joss Whedon uh, took that out of the film. It makes it makes it, it makes certain information like the way Ray Fisher was treated on set make a lot gleam a lot more sense. Yeah, I yeah. I, I can't argue with that. Like it's. I don't want to. Okay, this is, is going to be a two pronged mm. statement. It is not a better movie than the original because this is not a traditional movie. This is, um, it, it's it's too long to be a fucking movie. Like I oh, I watch absolutely. it in like in four separate sittings, but it is by far like without a shadow of the doubt like the better product. Like all the character building, all of um. Like, like, yeah, like Cyborg had nothing to do mm-hmm. in that original movie. He has like a complete background, has a whole story arc with his dad, like his entire like inner turmoil, like why he doesn't want to do anything. It's, it's insane how much better this version is. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not even like absolutely. a fucking Zack Snyder stan. I'm just nope, like, absolutely not. The like, only, the only, the only thing I'll give Zack credit for is, is this version of the movie. And calling out geeks and gamers. That's it. Yeah, that's basically <laughs> it. 
Um, it, it's weird because it's um, it's rated R, right? Or is it just like unrated? No, it's rated R because Batman says fuck, I think, like twice. He does say <laughs> he, he, he said the naughty times. word. He uh, literally say, does fuck yeah. twice. That's the only reason that it's wrong. There's not rated necessarily R. like gore in it, but it's definitely a lot bloodier and implied. Not, not even implied. They're, they're like limbs get severed. People explode. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I want. People explode. But hey, if, if people are like into that for like Justice League. For the love of God, please watch um, Justice League Apocalypse War. It's it's literally Avengers. Um, it's it's literally Infinity War slash Endgame, except like all of your favorite heroes are getting like horribly mutilated in like full gory detail, and it it's beautiful in like the most fucked up way possible. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think there's much hope for the Snyderverse moving forward because no. what Justice League came out what 2017, not. and like. <sighs> Yeah, and I think my favorite part about the Snyder Cut, I think, is how much I don't want more to it. If if that if that last scene on on the bridge is 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 any indicator of how the future cut how future versions would would be, let's 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 just not let's just pretend those those won't happen. Let's just stay here in this happy home. There's <laughs> nothing bad. It's all good. I, I like I think and this is kind of like the approach they've taken with the uh, anime stuff because like the animated stuff has just been like absolutely fucking stellar. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think f- um, their movie attempts, the like you know those, those uh, cinema ones, whatever. Um, they're all marred by like there's no like grand scheme, whereas like Marvel has a shit like plan like fucking years and years of oh, uh, time. It's like the same issue with what happened with um with with Star Wars, just like. Yeah, we ha- they had no idea where they were going. Uh, some of those movies were good, and then one of those we just pretend never existed. But, um, yeah, I-, I think they just really need to embrace the fact that these... I don't want to even say, like, these. I-, I think they just need to embrace, like, just let your movies be, like, isolated little things. They don't need to be intertwined, if that makes Players, any sense. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Me, personally, um, with the DC animated stuff, before they did new i i was much happier with with them before they switched to the new 52 style mm-hmm. um and i'm um and um I'm, I'm happy that we're starting to see that 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 level of 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 creativity come back again mm-hmm. uh would you recommend people watch the snyder cut um if you're chill with like if you chill with like sitting down for like a long ass time, then yeah, totally. Um, uh, I think like, I mean, honestly, I feel like it's, it honestly can be like a, a thing to learn from, like how badly you can ruin something. Um, um, and I, I don't even want to say like that Snyder's like some great fucking auteur, no. like visionary, but I, 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 I would generally stand by the argument if you let like a central creative like put their vision out there, it's generally going to be a better than a made by committee mm-hmm. production. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, though, like, again, I've I've said this before, but the only my personal opinion, but the only negative thing about the Snyder Cut really is um, that it validated a lot of poor behavior. Yeah. Um, hmm. Hmm. It's that's honestly the one thing that's kept me from even watching it is the fact that all that shit happened with the people who were like harassing others who said that they didn't want it or just like Mm -hmm. spending thousands upon thousands of dollars to rent billboards and rent stupid planes just to get something made. It sets a bad precedence for Holly for Hollywood in general, because it basically shows them that if people push hard enough, no matter if the pushing is like, like dis, yeah, destructive or not, studios are going to bend eventually and let and give in to that kind of pressure. And like I, I told this to a couple people, and they always try to fight me with the whole, oh well, he, well he, what's the word? He, he, um, he said it was in memory of his, of his, of his daughter. And it's like, yeah, that's fine, but you also have to remember it wasn't just that that got this movie made. It was the fact that people harassed others and pushed and spent thousands of dollars and basically harassed the studio system into doing it. 
which is not good. Like, don't do that. Oh. Yeah. I think, yeah. Um, I think <laughs> Mason nailed. That. I think Mason nailed it on the head with with fucking Zack Snyder dunking on uh, the dipshits from uh, Geeks and Gamers. Is like it. It's all. It, it's weird to think how much shit still fucking stems <laughs> from stupid fucking um, Gamergate from 2014. <laughs> But yeah. so much of the movie was just like, oh well, fuck, uh, Miss Marvel, well, not Miss Marvel, um, Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel, because just like, oh well, she's saying, uh, totally taken out of context, fucking thing, like against white people, whatever. And they're just like, well, that's the bad uh, woman. We're gonna support Wonder Woman rh- rhetorically. So it's just like it created like this really shitty fucking divide. And it's yeah, as Sarah said it. It's created a lot of toxic fandom, and it's it's yeah. got a lot of shitty people in it. It also. It also has, it's also caused them to go, oh, well, we have enough power, we can get anything made. Mm -hmm. So what's happening now is they're harassing James, James Gunn and harassing his trailers for the Suicide Squad, basically with like the hashtag release the air cut now, instead of just letting that treat it as its own fucking film, which is most likely going to be a lot better. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I oh, that's Suicide Squad trailer. Without that's question, great. it'll be better. Yeah, they are. Seen... Sorry, sorry. No, no, it's just they're they're now harassing Gun and they're her and they're downvoting the uh, trailers and posting hashtag release the air cut under it just because they just because they got high on the slight power that that they had getting the Snyder cut made. They now think they can get anything. Yeah, I mean, because y- y'all know my opinion is like. I get mad when people say the whole like fuck gamers for the Mass Effect 3 ending changing because I'm like, well, if you listen to criticism, you can't say we want criticism and we want to improve, but then, but don't do that to my thing that I like. Then that's the censorship or whatever. But yeah. that being said, I, everything surrounding the Snyder Cut wasn't just people criticizing. It was also flat out like, give us this thing that we have no entitlement to have. Zach kind of capitalizing on that i'm not gonna forget that but also fair dues he was fucked over by a studio system so it's a weird i I also situation that i can't blame any one specific person just a quick addition and and i and i don't want to say like the the assholes um like kind of pushing this forward that benefited from this other game a power trip i think it's also definitely worth noting that Zack snyder had uh one of his kids um he lost one of his kids like i think it was like right after principal photography Mm. and so he he, he was was not in pretty close to the movie being being finished and he took the very strong approach and i commend him for this and i always have said this yeah so so in that for stepping away yeah so in that regard i'm totally like hey this guy didn't get his 100 percent fair take on a movie he wanted to put out there so on that front, I'm just like, yeah, I'm glad he was a- able to at least do that. And um, definitely a unique not, situation. That's not and, at all the same to what's going on with the two Suicide Squad films right now. No, not at all. Yeah, um, yeah, it's really not like, different. Yes, um, yes, uh, the editing was changed with that. Because again, I haven't seen the movie. I've watched Dan Olson's folding ideas on it, which I, I'm, lead, I'm believing that because of the fact that I, based on his body of work, when he talks about things statistically and really goes into like how it works as a studio system, I've never seen him be wrong. So mm. that being said, like based on the fact of how how the movie was edited, how just it's a travesty of editing supposedly, without even getting into like tone, I yeah. don't think because I'm trying to paraphrase what he said. Like he he said something basically like even if you gave air his chance to do his own his own specific cut like it's not wouldn't necessarily be a good movie because it would still have the shitty things that are there that he filmed it would just be edited more cohesively so it would make more sense but it mm-hmm. wouldn't be a better mo- like you can save things in editing you can star wars as people know it, famously it. saved in editing yeah from Luke well because it was lucas's wife and then two other editors yeah right? yeah mm-hmm. and and then when you find out shit that was left on the cutting room floor, like, like things can't be saved from editing, but there's a limit to when you have footage and when you can't battleship Potemkin your way through everything, especially yeah. Suicide Squad. <laughs> the new Suicide Squad does look fucking sweet, and I'm all there for uh, King yeah, Shark. Excited. It looks fantastic. Starro's going to be in it. Yes! I was John- about to say. Everyone's, everyone said John Cena is in the movie, but I didn't see him at all. 
Oh, uh, Lord, here we go. They missed oh, the man. No, no, no. No, I'm not even mad that Jose made the joke. I'm mad that you made a joke that everyone has already made. Are I'm, we in Twitter, like, pre-2019 or what? Yes. No, we're, also, we're, we're, in, we're in high school when like, I was watching yeah. WrestleMania. Oh, with Jesus. Friends. We're like the also, 2010s now. Don't forget that Sylvester Stallone is voicing King Shark, which I think is the greatest. Wait, it what? Is. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. that oh, is Jesus Sylvester Christ. motherfucking Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm so excited about. <laughs> Lord. It's just, it's like, I. Gunn is one of those directors where I feel like, because so, kind of tangent, but I watched Godzilla vs. Versus, versus Kong on Friday night? Friday night. And I was talking to my boyfriend about it because we were watching it together. Um, and I was telling him that to me, Adam Wingard fits in as this group of directors where they where they sometimes make really, really awesome things and they sometimes not make awesome things. But the mm-hmm. one thing that you can always tell is that they're having fun doing it. Like him I did and not- a select amount of group of uh, directors, I think you can tell they're having fun doing some something so much. And I feel like Gunn is one of those directors, like he hasn't made like he's made some okay stuff, but he's made some like kick kick ass stuff. But no matter what he's doing, you could always tell that he's like having a blast doing it. And I think oh, watching yeah. that Suicide Squad trailer 100% confirms because mm. you said he's he's putting Starro in it like that came out of nowhere. It's such and, a you know, and you know, and you know, Gunn was just Starro like was just like look. <laughs> well, because he well because he reached deep enough to get polka dot man, so you know that yeah. dude was like, so if I can get this, can I also get this? <laughs> like you put Howard the Duck in fucking in Guardians, what, of Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> And and, and uh, crypto, Cri- crypto the space dog, which is also no, 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 heavily no. reaching. No, Leica is what you put. Leica, thank you. Like that's also heavily reaching as someone who has read like older Guardians. Like that's hella reaching. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, yeah, I feel like he's he's one of those directors where I may not like everything that he's made, but I can't deny the fact that that dude is having a blast. Like yeah. just. Just, like, let him have fun. I will watch whatever he makes just because it's fun and because I can tell in every frame of it that he was having fun shooting it. He's he's a creator that I let get away. I I give him the benefit of the doubt when he makes a gross joke here and there in the movie because I know there's going to be so much good, genuinely good shit to, like, outweigh it if the gross shit exists. And I haven't really seen him put gross... Because, like, I never saw Super. I know that apparently has, like, a really oddly gratuitous rape scene or something in it. So it's like, um, uh, trying to remember. It, there's a that, that was a weird fucking super. movie. Is super? Which one is super? Rain Wilson and uh, oh, eh, uh, movie Elliot just Page, also, yeah, also just it, wasn't a very good movie. To it also has too. Nathan Fillion as uh, like well, it, it's like some uh, like Jesus superhero or something. I don't oh remember. It, it's great. I know it's another one of those like it was like. It was the same. It was that same era where like everyone had their thing of like, well, what if superheroes were real but like real people? And it's like you had Garth Ennis doing the boys where they had powers, but it was fucked up. And you had yeah, to fuck that comic. Um, you had, um, you had like Kick Ass, which God, I felt I used to, I thought that was the coolest shit in high school, but then I grew out of it. That's I feel like that's a metaphor for all of Mark Millar's work. But anyway, um, was 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 that when Chronicle came out? Did Super come out around Chronicle? I think so. Maybe, maybe Chronicles, Chronicles no, are Chronicles pretty interesting. <laughs> Chronicles, Chronicles is like- a good film. Just wish that director didn't go downhill incredibly quickly. <laughs> yeah, Except the same oh, fucker who did yeah, Fantastic yeah. Four. Yeah, oh, Josh no. Trank. Oh, <laughs> oh that's together. the same dude who did Fantastic oh, Four. He went shit. like this to- mm. fast. <laughs> that movie is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's one of the most boring films I've ever seen. I watched it on a plane and I fell asleep. Oh my god! Do we- on a plane? That's the worst because yeah. you're like watching a movie in this like yeah. ratio. Do um, do we want to talk about Godzilla whatsoever? It was it it was fun. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot. I forgot to mention it, Sarah. When what? you brought up the actor, uh, not actor, the uh, the director. Adam I was looking. Guard at- who made some yeah. kick ass shit. He he made the Death Note he Netflix made the Death adaptation. Note movie. <laughs> He that was okay, horrible. Made, like, the, live, the Netflix one? Yes. 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 Oh, he Jesus made, Christ. He made the Death Note film, but he also did The Guest, which if 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 anyone here has not watched The Guest yet, please just watch fucking it. watch The Guest. 
It is <laughs> Captain America flipped on its head. It's amazing. Don't get me started on Adam Wingard and Simon Barrett because literally, like, I, I, I mean, Simon Barrett's not writing um, Kong versus Godzilla. And real talk, if you do start talking about it, I may have to actually excuse myself because I'm trying to just avoid anything about that. I want to watch it with my boyfriend. I thought it was cool. Mm. Glad that it's on HBO Max. So I don't have to go to a yeah. movie theater and almost get get myself killed because of COVID. Exactly. <laughs> um, I enjoyed it. Yeah. It is. Mesa, did you see it? I enjoyed not yet. Whatever no. it was. Okay. I haven't seen any of the Godzilla movies, so I'm planning on watching those before that. Twenty four. Uh, they're all on HBO Max. So yeah, 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 I know, I know. I, I, I'm going to be watching with a friend. Mm-hmm. So I watched Kong last night. So and that movie's really good. That, right? I did not see it. No, I did watch a bunch of the fight scenes on YouTube, though. I mean, uh, I watched it. Uh, it was on a TV next to me. Um, it was paid for when it was on that TV. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, I watched some clips of it on that. Adam, I'm I'm gonna make I'm gonna say the thing about Adam Wingard and Simon Barrett now. I don't know what's up with those two because on like on the I used to be like I think Adam Wingard is a better director than a writer, and then I learned he hasn't written like almost anything except for a few things at the beginning of his career. Like he's written things here and there, but he's really not the things he's known for were either written by Simon Barrett or written by someone else, and. When I started looking through that, I'm like, these two wrote Your Next, which is one of the best fucking slasher movies I think ever made. And like, I wish it had revived the slasher genre. It doesn't seem to have, but eh, still, like, I couldn't believe how good that was when it when like I was like, oh, it's just a modern slasher movie. It's going to be garbage. Um, the guest I've heard from people other than Sarah that like that movie is just great. I've only seen like one scene from it where they're in a bar and it's like one of the most ridiculous fucking, not even like a fight scene, just one guy beating the living shit out of a bunch of people for like a reason. But I almost feel bad for the people he's beating up and like almost killing them. Yeah, that's, anyway. that's, that is the point of that film. I'm just going to go by it. saying that you feel bad for everybody. <laughs> But then, but then Simon Barrett and Adam Wingard have also, and they worked on VHS one and two together. Like they did the the framing device through movies, and then they did like I think they they each collaborated on like one of the shorts in each of the two of them. I don't know if I haven't looked into VHS viral as far as if they're involved in it. The movie's fucking trash. Don't watch it. Oh, is that is that the third one? That's the third one. It's fucking horrible. Only care about the first two because those are the only two that Adam Wingard have like actually touched. Is okay, wait so is is viral. Is that um? Is that still like a compilation or? It is. It's just okay. terrible. Because I remember the first one. It most of the stories were pretty good. The second one had some real highs, and then just like I want to say, like most of them were lows. Is that yeah. kind of the same for viral, or is it just like no, all trash? Imagine if they were all lows. Oh damn! Like yeah, it's just all lows. It's not even like oh, I can watch this and make fun of it. Like I, it's it's just bad. You can kind of make fun of it the first time you watch it. After that, it's just depressing. But, um, yeah. but like then they make shit like the Blair Witch reboot, which is like, I, I can see what it tried to do and kind of almost respect that, but it's just so. Like, I watched the Blair Witch with my boyfriend and because I'd never seen it. And you're like, talking about the like, Blair, the Blair Witch the project, original. correct? Blair okay, Witch yeah, project. that one's the Blair Witch project. This new one is just the Blair. Yeah. Which, and yeah. I love that. So then I was like, okay, fine, I'll watch this remake that I remake slash sequel that I know is bad. I watched it and I was like, this it was just terrible. Like I was almost there's only one the one redeeming thing about that movie is like there's some cool stuff at the very end and the scene where like they're crawling the main characters like crawling through a or I guess who becomes the main character, crawling through a tunnel in like a first person camera perspective. I have big time claustrophobia, but it doesn't usually get triggered by things like film information that literally fucking triggered it and i like almost i had to pause the scene and like kind of go away from it and go back to it um but but like i mean they made that they made the i, I don't know if they both made the death note thing but I uh, i'm gonna check right now yeah i know adam Wingard directed it so um i guess to go back to godzilla a little yeah. bit um which adam ring directed I, yeah um i won't say too much because you haven't seen it but it has really good action. Um, I kind because I I think that Legendary's deal with um with, with Toho's <laughs> expired, so I don't know if they're gonna make any more. But um, man, 2014 Godzilla was really fucking cool with the way 
Like, I, I kind of like the fact Godzilla is only in that movie for like 10 mm. minutes cumulatively because every time he's on there, it's all the more impactful. And the way they frame it from a human perspective is like, um, well, Sarah and Mesa probably know, just like whenever you have a character that's like at the very top of the frame, makes them look very big. And there's a lot of mm-hmm. shots in, um, yeah. in uh, Kong versus Godzilla, Godzilla versus Kong, whatever. Where just like they're both on screen and it seem and it's less impactful because there's a bunch of tall ass buildings around them, so it's not, it, it's not as uh, just like look at this giant fucking monster. It's just like oh here's these two two cool things fighting each other, but, but I don't know. It's a fun time. Also, Blaine, to answer your questions, Simon Barrett did not write a uh, Death Note. It was a bunch of people I've never heard of. <laughs> there you go. But but Adam Wingard did direct your next two. Yeah. And Simon so, Barrett wrote your next. Yeah, yeah. So, like, again, it's the whole thing of they make very low lows, but very awesome highs, but you can tell that both of them are just having a blast doing whatever they're doing. Because, like, that's how I feel about the Blair Witch, is I love the Blair Witch Project so much. But it's like, yeah, even though the Blair Witch isn't great, you could still tell that, like, Adam Wingard was like, we are going to pretend, like, the other films never happened. Like, this is what comes after that that one. And you could tell that he was just, like, having a blast doing it, which I think is one of the only things that, make the, that makes that film really, like, watchable. Is, like, yeah. knowing that someone was doing it with, with I mean, it, for, for, like, his in, in, in intention was oh, I'm going to finally make that sequel to that movie that never happened, a movie that I have a lot of respect for and while may not have been great, just watching the whole thing, you could tell that he had respect for the uh, original, that that like he was like, this is what's going to be that sequel to it. Don't even get me started about the fucking Bloober Team game either. That game's not good either. It just destroys. I played the... it for five seconds and was like, this is too <laughs> no. complicated. I don't need this in my life. They make it unneedless. That's one thing about the Blair Witch universe is that people make it unneedlessly complicated when it I mean, doesn't need to be. With that fucking reboot sequel. <laughs> when it doesn't like, need oh, to be. It's a creepy witch scares. in a forest. Let's. It's um, a creepy witch in a forest. Yeah, That's Jose, it. save us from this conversation. Yeah, but let, let's go to. Never stop. Let's jump into some fan questions. Uh, Hell yeah! Supplied I by love uh, questions. Yes. Um, Does half so, the work. So for these me. are supplied by uh, Ramen Nomad. Uh, first question: uh, What modern game would you like to see retroized? So three of the things that I kind of thought up beforehand would be: I would like to see Doom as uh not not just like you know regular doom from i don't remember when the first one came out like what 94 or something no before that i don't know i'd have to look it up but i would i would like i would like to see um doom 2016 or doom eternal like as a top-down bullet hell so you can still see like everything that's going on but it's still basically all the same gameplay mechanics uh the second one would be dark souls but basically within the framework of Link to the Past, where it's just top down. Um, it, it, I don't know. I feel like Zelda games could already be that if they just ratcheted up the, the difficulty a bit. Um, but no, there was uh, what was the game? Uh, Salt and Sanctuary came out on PS4. It was basically a 2D side scroller version of that. I guess like before, like even Hollow Knight was out. Uh, but but the one I'm actually most interested interested to see, which would actually be cool, since the formula is already there, uh, the Evil Within as a classic Resident Evil game, like on the PS One, mm. I think would be pretty mm, fucking cool. That is interesting. Mm-hmm. It might be hard, mm-hmm. granted, with how the first <laughs> game is like constantly shifting levels and stuff. Like I, I don't think it'd be possible on that original hardware. But if it, it's just like in the style of like that aesthetic, uh, like PS One aesthetic, then yeah, I think it'd be cool. I mean, Silent Hill 1 had Nowhere, which was literally just an amalgamation of both, like, areas you've been to and areas that just you have seen but not been to. You could absolutely do, like, a shifting realities thing like that. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily, well, actually, no, it could even be in front of you, because literally there was a scene in Silent Hill 1 where you see the world change, and it's actually done in a pretty decent way, even for the 90s. Let's see what what would uh, you guys like to see? Let's well, see. I mean, the, the the one thing I'd say to your last comment though, Jose, is that uh, puppet combo that indie developer team exists, and they're basically doing that. Like they're making modern day horror premises into like old school horror games that were meant for like the like PlayStation One and stuff. 
I thought Public and, Combo was one guy. Uh, is it one guy? I thought, I thought it was a team. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, my God. That makes it even better. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> those games kick so much ass. And I they're want... basically just like modern day horror titles, but made in like lesser bits and inc- incredibly well done and incredibly ter- terrifying. Tangential question. Uh, now that it is 2021, it, what is the cutoff for something to be retro? Because someone pointed it out to me that fi- conversation. that Final Fantasy X came out 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. Yeah, it's an old game. Yeah. I We're would say old. anything pre 360 and PS3 is yeah. retro at this point. No. That makes me PS2, feel I don't I don't like PS2 that. PS2 is definitely <laughs> retro. PS2 I don't like is that. Retro. <laughs> Let's see. To me, it's um, still like Super Nintendo. Jose, yeah, you're like this four is or five where, years um, younger than me. You don't get to complain <laughs> about this. This is where I'm going to expose myself as someone that doesn't actually play very many modern games. I mostly play an MMO in like fighting games from 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and this is a slightly mean answer. Uh, I would make Street Fighter V retro so that it looks like Street Fighter Three, <laughs> And that's all that I would do. That's it. That's all I would do. Hmm. And just make Call it have it the, the yeah. I'd make it look like Street Fighter Three and have like the sound design and aesthetic of Street Fighter Three. That's all I would change. Oh my God, Mesa, what uh, about you? Uh, I think I would do um, uh, the Batman Arkham series. Ooh, that'd be good. Traditional Metroidvanias. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that'd be cool. Be fun. That would basically yeah. be like. They've already done that too, like like uh, Black Gates. I never played it, but it was supposed to be like I more mean, in that two D vein, right? I, yeah, I guess I guess you could say they did that on paper. <laughs> what is that even? I, I didn't play those games. I don't know. I'm just playing. Is I'm it just cheating a joke. to say System Shock Three in the style of System Shock Two? Because that game's probably never coming out, so I could at least stream. <laughs> yes. Yes. No! <laughs> yeah, that's cheating. <laughs> Say no! game's not out yet. But oh it's probably God. never coming out. It could, you don't know. <laughs> it's gonna like be Duke Nukem cool. Forever came out, anything's possible. <laughs> oh god. Um, I mean the only thing I could think of this was something like Resident Evil 5. Like in like original mm. Resident Evil. But like there's no co-op in it, so you're just big beefy Chris like punching things with a fixed oh camera. God. What, what about <laughs> this? Isn't my answer. This is just me bringing up a fun thing that makes me feel old. Remember when Resident Evil Zero was supposed to be a Nintendo sixty four? Yeah, experience? I remember yes. that. Yes. And there was like a play demo. Not that we could play, but like that was shown on. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. My answer is kind of a cheat, but it fits perfectly for this question, so I can't help but say it. Um. I would want to see Yakuza Seven have <laughs> a classic top down. Uh, RPG way to play it in the same vein of how like Dragon Quest Eleven has like the pixel classic mode, mm. um, and I think that would work perfectly for that because of the fact that the main character is just such a fucking like JRPG Dragon Quest nut. I think that's a good one. I don't even yeah, think that's absolutely. cheating. I want that. I've wanted that ever since the fucking game came out. I've just been like, please make this a thing that you it put as DLC. I'll pay how much would it. you? I don't care. If, if they dropped it as DLC, how much would you pay for that? I'd pay probably up to twenty dollars for it. I'll be real. And that's that's like that's like bad price. That's like I'm part of the problem at that point, but I still do it. <laughs> I'm surprised uh, no one has said blood Bloodborne yet, because I because I would have countered with nightmare creatures. Oh, have you have you guys <laughs> seen? Um, I was about to say. Have you guys? <laughs> the same I, thing. I, I, I forget. What's I forget that, the, um, the the at for the person that's doing it, but someone's making a PS One version yeah, of uh, Bloodborne. Like, um, Fuck, it just there's looks this like old PS1 game. Isn't it's not is it Nightmare Creatures? You're probably thinking of Nightmare Creatures because it looks no, 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 it, 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 it's <laughs> legit like an axe and bandages. It's legit somebody um just remaking Bloodborne but in PS1. Yeah. I remember uh the game I'm thinking it was an old PS1 game. It's kind of like it's kind of like a Bloodborne esque thing, but he has like a spear, and I remember the spear moveset was really fun. Was, oh, I, think did it, was, it, I think it might have been it, Nightmare Creatures. Oh yeah, have I'm seeing a picture of a guy with a spear. It's definitely this. Yeah, game. because Nightmare Creatures I had think a. I had a demo disc of it. Yeah, they had a male main character and a female main character that you could choose from, and they both had different stories. And yeah. it was basically Bloodborne on the uh, PlayStation One. The uh, the I person behind Castlevania yeah. 64 clone. I'm, I understand. Oh yeah. 
The uh, person behind the uh, PS1 Ble- Bloodborne remake on Twitter, at least, is uh, goes at at uh, bot botster with the O being a zero. I'll put that in chat. It, I recommend everyone looks at it because it looks fucking sick, it and really I would does. absolutely play dope. it. Um, let's go on to the second question. Is Donkey Kong a kaiju? Yes. No. Uh, I when he is big, <laughs> I would big, say when, yes. When but is no. he big? <laughs> what is he Donkey big? Kong? He no. can take a mushroom and smash. I guess oh, I guess anyone the, the can. Everybody though. is. All yeah. right, then, okay. then Meat Gunner is a kaiju. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. It's difficult because kaiju kaiju just literally means like strange beast, right? That just it's just like strange creature. Or strange is that what it literally translates to? uh essentially yeah but so i mean i don't know i guess donkey yeah. kong isn't that strange to me to be honest he's just a yeah. big monkey i yeah i would, uh, bowser I would ra- kaiju. he's strange i would rather go to like bowser for being a kaiju because yeah. there's been plenty yeah. of times where he's like fucking gigantic he's pretty strange is ultraman technically a kaiju or because he's human is that like different i don't know is he a creature i wouldn't describe ultraman as a creature okay Huh. Yeah, I'm not trying maybe, to be like a maybe shit. I, I will. am curious. <laughs> <laughs> but like, as far as I understand, kaiju don't actually have to be big. They can be like regular size. Mm, okay. Sometimes they're weird. So just like a scary dog can be a kaiju? Yeah. They're just did mostly any- big. Did anyone here ever play Donkey Kong Jungle Beat? I or not, not where, where like, you're just going around beating the so shit like, out of like fucking Kong? kaiju? Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> it's it's like the, the entire game. It just it all revolves about. around like beating the shit out of other giant apes, and like you go to space and fight one on a fucking meteor falling towards Earth. It's and it's like, and it like all depends on how fast you hit you, you like hit the bongos. Oh, uh, dude, I felt so bad for my parents when I'd want to play that shit like fucking seven in the morning. They're like, oh my god, dude, shut the fuck up. I'm like, but I need to beat up the fuck. <laughs> It's like it- my old arcade <laughs> stick when I played Street Fighter Four was really really loud. <laughs> really loud. Uh, next question: Is Mario a war criminal? Mm, I think. I mean, I mean has he it, has I he mean, broken any laws? Has he broken any Geneva Convention laws? Like, I I think it's well, pretty no. messed up that like a Goomba can like touch him and like Mario overreacts and jumps off the screen, whereas Mario will just like stomp on him and poof him out of existence. I think that's pretty fucked up. Well, if you recall, I forget who said this. Rem can probably elaborate more. But if I recall, isn't it that Mario, it's all fake? It's, they're all actors and they're just having fun. They're just that's playing th- games that's together. That's the third one. True. No, that's, I thought that's, that was that's all the, of uh, Mario. No, yeah, that's the um that's the that's what uh, Miyamoto said that's his idea and that's yeah. why when you when you play like like uh Mario like Mario Kart and all that, that's all of them like done with the play together just having fun. Yeah. Now they're just having fun. I think yeah, just, I think Miyamoto's whitewashing some some war crimes right there. Wow. Maybe. Oh my god! Wow, it, he's not it, the composer for Dragon Quest. Thank you. Is uh, <laughs> 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 Mesa, you win. Oh my god! The, the the title of tonight's podcast is Mesa wins. <laughs> is uh, is it a war crime to light people on fire? Yes. Um. I'm I'm sure. I'm not it familiar with all the Geneva team? conventions, but I'm going to go out on a limb and I say, guess... yeah. Oh, I mean, so Lakitu drops spinies, right? Yeah. So I guess if you were to like hit them out the sky with, with like a star, that's like against the Geneva convention, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I guess maybe I guess maybe I guess you can consider like a cloud to be one big parachute. And so just like killing Lakitu in general is also part of it. Lakitu is like actively trying to kill you though. I don't I don't know if there's some clause or something to the Geneva Convention. I'm not um uh, uh, uh I don't I don't know the convention that well. So like if someone's just hanging It's not a con I go to. Gear, it's not a con I go to. It's a war crime to kill them. <laughs> Is it a war crime in, in co-op <laughs> Mario games to toss your teammates off the edge? No. No? It's not a war crime. No. It's just, not it's just a regular crime. Yeah, it's yeah. just a regular crime. 
humanitarian yeah. crime. Human is human and hum humanitarian. That's it. I don't like That's this question because we already know that Mario is not human. Is he? Uh, he's not a human being. He's a he, plumber. He doesn't have yeah. nipples. His species is plumber. Just like oh, yeah, they took his, they sanded his nipples. It's terrible. <laughs> Isn't that, like, considered bodily torture? Maybe that's why okay. he's so upset all the time. <laughs> so, new question. They, they upset Peach violated his spaghetti. the Geneva Convention? Oh, God. <laughs> Is Peach a despot? Huh? Ooh, I don't know. Yes. Okay. I don't know. We don't, I mean, we the don't Peach from Origami King is definitely a despot in the making, but I didn't finish that game yet. I mean... Isn't her one of her specials in Smash literally just to hold up Toad, aka her servant, to like take attacks for her? Yeah. Yes. That's she also hits up. you. She also hits you with her uh, booty as well. Well, wow. so I mean, that yeah, thing's a deadly a weapon. Crime. That thing's a deadly weapon. All I'm saying is, we don't know the situation <laughs> with the Mushroom Kingdom. We don't know the political intrigue and discourse. <laughs> Yeah. All we know that the, it could have been a socialist utopia before Peach came if, in with the backing of the CIA. If if we go by the logic of <laughs> Mario and Luigi partners in time, she time. she literally sends babies to go fight wars for her. So that's fucked up. Yeah, exactly. You get a little little, a, little Toad right in there. You could write <laughs> a lot of had... BG Cats comics about this. She oh, also God, I haven't thought about that in ghost. years, Ralph. <laughs> she also has I mean, ghosts we... living in her house, so I mean, that's also, like, incredibly sketchy. She also knows a I mean, star named Twink. Yep. It's a, Wait, it's is a, that a thing? A castle. Wait, what game is that from? What, Twink? Yeah. That's from fucking Paper Mario 1. Yeah. Oh, shit, I never played oh, Paper Mario yeah, 1. yeah, you're you right. Can't... Oh my god, that is his name! <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> oh, you know. It's kind of weird, because, I mean, that is definitely a baby star. So it's like, hmm. Someone didn't think about this when they... Yeah, they def this. there's no way that's intentional. There's no, no it was, way. It was a long time ago, alright? Internet was at its infancy. We're talking about N64 culture here. wasn't running rap. Oh my god. Someone, I just imagine if someone was like, they're trying to cancel Twink from Paper Mario. <laughs> Stop the censorship. Do you guys remember the, um, what well, was it, the uh, quote unquote hidden message of uh, Super Mario Galaxy that says, yeah. You are Mr. Oh, Gay? Mr. I, Gay. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. You are Mr. Gay. <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's beautiful. Who could forget, You are Mr. Gay? No one cares. We all are Mr. Gay, honestly. The real Mr. Gay are the gays we made yeah. along the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just go to the next question. Yeah. Um, what video game universe would you be comfortable living in as a normal bystander? I don't know okay. why I put this Not as. many of them. So I, I, I actually I, thought about this. I thought about this for like an hour because it, 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 it doesn't look good. Nothing ever looks good. <laughs> because at first... All right, sorry, I have coffee. At first, I was gonna say Kingdom Hearts Two. If you live at like Traverse Town, you're fine. Traverse, nothing, nothing, chill. nothing yeah. happens at what, Traverse Town wait, 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 for wait. Kingdom Hearts Three when you have a restaurant that's ran by a rat and a gr greedy corporate duck, and you're wait, like, "This is it one? Is it one of the first things in Traverse Town? Like a dude gets freaking murked by a nobody right in front of you? Yeah, that's in one, and I was about. That's to in that one up. of them, and in three. The place is like a. The place is kind of like a utopia, save for that giant wave of heartless that attacks you, and some more nobodies that come out of nowhere. But Wait, you I, I, anyone I, die in Travers? I just realized. Did you just talk shit about Ratatouille making food? Uh, yeah. What I didn't talk shit about it, but it's a rat making food. If you see that hey. without without any context, it's gonna freak the it's hell out of you. It's it's good food. What do, what do I care? Let me wash his hands. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I know that he did. Rats <laughs> wash like, their hands. But in it's all complete honesty, I, know I was Remy thinking would about would mask this. Up. He it, would. It's it's kind of hard to think of a place where being a bystander would like make you okay. Because at I first, mean, my mind went plenty. to like there's Gran Turismo or Forza. <laughs> you know, there's just a lot of cars everywhere. That's just, that's but just you're regular though. Pretty chill. I yeah. thought, what if I live in Storm and Storm? Wind and like wow, but then I realize zombies attack it, or the yeah. horde attacks it, or like 
<laughs> or, or what a or what what Final, Final Fantasy. Fantasy. They don't even have fucking. What? They don't even have TV. I don't want to do that. What What was the city in WoW that got Not- fucking nuked by the horde? Oh, uh, that was um something with they, a T. That was uh, Bandits? that was where the Worgens come c- come from. I'm thinking uh, of a yeah. different one. The uh, the city where the Worgens come from got nuked with like literal fucking poison and like acid. So that did break the Geneva Convention. Oh, no. well, well, see, I'm even thinking of a, of a worse one. It, it was um. I forget the the bad freaking oh, war chief. They nuke a city. The, they literally yes, nuke it. Yes, because they killed Jaina's boyfriend, and she went fuck the horde. Yeah, I know. I know. I don't remember the name of it, but I. Know Azeroth does not sound about. like Azeroth is not a chill place to live. I mean, some of some of some, some of Azeroth. Y'all is are fine. just thinking about it the wrong way. I mean, not not <laughs> Nexus. She's got it. Mm. Like, because my answer is Stardew Valley. Yeah, that's Stardew a good Valley one. or Harvest Moon sixty four, one or the other, yeah. but probably Stardew Valley. Animal Crossing. Yeah, that's also an answer, but that's not my answer. <laughs> if if Corey was here, I'd say Res- Resident Evil specifically for the tall lady, just to get under his skin. Mm, maybe <laughs> before she kills you. Yeah, yeah, that would be pretty all right. You. I mean, yeah, that's, I'm not complaining. Nice. I mean, if you got to go out, that's the way to go out. I think Street Fighter, honestly. Street Fighter, yeah, it'd be pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, everyone's chill. You can everyone's just be like a normal chill. dude in the background, and then if you yeah. want to like try really hard, you can learn to throw a fireball. Like, it's, I don't see what's the yeah. if you what's try. Like, really oh wow, are. look at that! It's fucking oh, it's Zangief. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, look at Cody. Yeah. Cody was just random Cody. background boy who was in one game, and then he built his way up to being mayor of fucking Metro City. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, and then I guess I guess the end of Street Fighter Three happens, and that part's not great. But you yeah, know, it might be fine. Little, wait, what happens? It, it might, might be, be fine. fine. Maybe uh, we, we return don't really to know. harmony. Yeah, we what, return what, to harmony. What happens at the end of Street Fighter Three? <laughs> well, you know, you return to harmony, and all you need all you need to do is ask, what and Gil will mean? Gil will bring you there. Ah, uh, Gil is the weird god who wears like speedos, and that's it. Yeah, oh he's yeah, he's awesome. He's red and blue. I've seen him. He's got and a then, lot of hair. See, see, you would say Street Street Fighter, but then wasn't Alex just like a random bystander? And Gil was like, "I want to take over huh? your body." No. And Alex was like, "Who are you?" Yeah. Alex was Alex like wins. his friend. Hey, Alex his wins, friend, right? um, his friend got the shit beat out of him by Gil because they challenged him. They challenged each other to a fight. And then Alex is like, oh, that Gil guy beat the shit out of you. And Alex's friend was like, yeah, you definitely shouldn't get revenge for me. It's a really <laughs> stupid idea, and I'm pretty chill with this. Like, you don't have to worry about it. And Alex is I like, no, Alex. I'm going to go get re- my revenge. I and then he Alex. either beats Gil or super does it. <laughs> I don't know why for my idea, because I thought it'd be funny. Uh, Saints Row, because there's constantly stupid ass fucking Saints shit going Row. on in there. Like, I think, like, I, 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 hear, hear me out, hear me out. If you're just like a bystander, you're constantly seeing stupid ass fucking shit go on that's absurd. I'm just like, if I die, at least it's interesting. But hey, to your credit, <laughs> everyone does die, like, at the very beginning of four, but the Saints get time travel, so it's all good. Oh, they can just reverse that uh, shit. I don't know. Maybe yeah. Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball would be pretty fun. Any of the Dragon Ball video games. Yeah. If you yeah, die, getting, uh, if you die getting... in some apocalyptic event, they just bring you back the Dragon Balls. And they got yeah. TV and internet. I was yeah. going to say True. Guilty guilty Gear, but then I went, wait. Yeah, they don't have yeah, TV. Yeah, I'm not, they don't have I'm not sure about that one. Like, they, don't, they don't have electronics because magic. They yeah, don't need them when you have magic. Because the techno virus. Because yeah. the, the Technovirus, we don't need electronics because it scares the hell out of us. So we're moving back to magic. It's like, whoa. Can I? I mean, hey, knowing knowing magic sounds like fun. But can I say maybe Persona just for the chill vibes with friends, no. even though like the rest of the world <laughs> kind of sucks. Like, yeah. I mean, but like if you're just like a dude in Persona, then like everything's no. fun. Like, nothing's different. Yeah. No, no, only because, l- listen, not even for because I hate Persona, because that means that whatever gross fucking thing the Persona team is going to figure out to put in the next game or that game you're basing it on is yeah. going to be reality, and I don't want to live in that reality. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't want to live in a multiverse with that reality. Persona games suck for me and Blaine. Yeah. yeah. It'll be a shitty world to live in. 
Yeah. I mean, I'm going to play yeah. 2 at some point, because that's one of the not hey, bad ones. 2 is pretty dope. <laughs> Wait, don't you fight and, Hitler in and 2? Persona 2, 2 oh. is also pretty yeah, dope. Yeah, you should always yeah. fight Hitler, Jose. What are you yeah. Yeah. No, 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 yeah, no, no, I'm, no, I'm say, I'm, I, no, 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 I'm saying that's you a good thing. You got something to tell us all? Uh, that's a good thing. Hey, did you do uh, uh, Jose. You do did fight Jose is over party. But... In Germany, in the German version, I think it was the German version of Persona 2, since they couldn't call him Hitler, they just gave him sun, sun, sunglasses sure, over um, his dumb isn't that, mustache. Sure that isn't that just straight up cooler? Yeah. yeah, they took off his mustache and gave him sunglasses, and I think they just call him, like, dictator or Fuhrer. Yeah. I, I'm pretty oh sure it's God. just Fuhrer. Yeah. It's totally he not had, Hitler. He Pinky promise. weird sun, sunglasses. So yeah, he just has sunglasses like, on. <laughs> it's so weird. He's a totally different guy. God. Jesus Christ! Oh God! God. <laughs> um, Ramen Nomad said Pokemon. That'd be pretty tight. Yeah, they Pokemon would be good. Yeah. But that's like, but that's, but that's like an easy answer. Yeah, like, we all know easy that's because like, it's a be be Valley it, was an easy answer. I still did it. It's probably the best answer to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Oh no! It to- it totally oh, is. No. definitely is the default. I don't know if I necessarily answer. agree with that. I, I. I like the fact that you don't just walk into like a fire breathing dog when you're outside. That's, so that's all, pretty all cool. you have, all you ever do is faint. It's okay. Yeah. But what if what if like what if my dog that's could not... breathe fire? That'd be pretty cool. Or she <laughs> Jose, was where does ghost type instead. come from? Jose, oh, where does yeah, ghost right. type come from? <laughs> yeah, you're right. It is all dead people. That that only happens if you lose all your money. But then that's Pokemon is a true afterwards. capitalist uh, machine. Also, I mean, would you want to live in a world where, like, when you turn, what, was it 12 or, thir- or 13, you just get sent Ten. out on your own? No, Ten. no, 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 no. Yeah. Yes. Ten. They just you send you to. out on your own. No, because not everybody does get sent out on their own. Some people just fuck around. Yeah, but you know, you're gonna have, you like, you land if you want to. You could be. Also, be wait, bitch, Pokemon, has, <laughs> Pokemon has, like, free, no questions asked health care. And all the schools in Pokemon, you just walk into and the teacher just tells you everything. Literally. This, actually, no, Pokemon is the best answer. <laughs> like, maybe every once in a while you gotta deal with, like, some angry bug that, like, is, has drills for hands. But, I mean, I don't know, the benefits, I feel like it outweighs the bad parts. And if yeah. you're scared of the bugs, just get a dragon for a friend. I feel like Excuse even if you have you. to come up and like fight a gang, your Pokemon are always constantly over leveled anyway, so it's yeah. just chill. Excuse you, I would also argue. Easy now. I would also argue Digi- Digimon would be kind of okay to live in, depending Digimon on what. Digimon like. wouldn't be that bad. Yeah, well, well, wouldn't be that bad. No, every once in a while, there's like Digimon Satan that like destroys the whole world or something. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I would not want to go on an adventure with my best friend digimon just for like at the end of the season to be like sorry we got a dip we can't be together yeah. we're like oh, no fuck that. don't remind yeah. me of the movie that just like, came out that when it comes to villains guy. it's like either like digimon it's like this is digi satan and he's gonna destroy the entire internet and everyone in it and then in pokemon it's like why is it raining so much can we yeah. just like, talk about it's like been <laughs> raining for like at least a day and it's like a lot why did all the seasons and weather suddenly stop? Something's hey, wrong. Oh, because the sun is burning like way more oh, Earth. Can we just talk about like how fucking insane the concept of Digimon is? Like, it's totally like a '90s fever dream of like how the internet works. And then it Alone. never stopped. Yes, and it never stopped, and it's still really great. <laughs> Man, I love. I still need to watch those movies. I yeah. love Digimon movie. Yeah. Tries, uh, yeah, hell yeah, the original, I've like, seen the first two. Movie? They're all on the, the I, new I still one, have. The, I still have my VHS. It's under the. So bed. do I. The so tries I. are all on the YouTube. The tries last are I so checked. good. The tries are, all are really free on really YouTube. Good. Yeah, Wait, they, they are, are all free on YouTube. And yeah. link, link, that link that in chat right. Link that in chat right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get it. Uh, the only one that's not free on YouTube is Last uh, Digivolution Kizuna. Which is very not, good. Um, it's very, yeah. very, very, very good. I bawled my eyes out. I will not say any more than that. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> let's go and move on to I'll some put it news in real quick. Stream chat, and then I'll also post it in Discord. All right. Oh, shit. Uh, um, quick little update for the last, uh, I, I guess, like the big news story we did last week. Um, Sony has officially confirmed that they are indeed shuttering services for the PS3, PSP, and Vita digital storefronts. 
the silver lining being that users are able to re-download content that they already yeah. own. So I think a, um, some of our concerns are kind of wiped away with that, that you yeah. are going to be able to re-download yeah. your stuff. But a lot of our other points still kind of stand for just general um, services being shut down, as well as the fact that if you don't manage to buy these games yeah. in time, if you're some kid born down the line who wants to go easy access to PS1 games, you're still shit out of luck. Yeah. It's not so, quite the um, Library sorry. of Alexandria situation that we initially thought it was going to be, but it is still pretty bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. and from from what I understand, like I know in the E, uh, at least, there are games that have either been delisted or yeah. other things. Um, there was a post going on. I know that some of them, because like uh, Jose, remember we were talking about like, well, you were like, why can't I play Crash on my Vita? And I was like, why can't I play this game and that game on the Vita? It's because they've been delisted both from the Vita storefront and like the ability, certain ones, the ability to actually like manually put it <clears> on the <throat> system from your PS3. So you can only play them on the PS3. Mm -hmm. I don't know when that happened, but it was, I guess, a little bit before, like, well, like earlier this year, I guess. I want to say specifically for Crash and Spyro because I that was like one of the first things I tried downloading on the Vita when yeah. I got it in like twenty thirteen I want to say and mm -hmm. just like th though I know for those games specifically they were just never playable on the Vita yeah, they were right. on PSP they were on PS three maybe some kind of weird licensing issue or something maybe. with Activision I have no mm -hmm. idea but uh, um. I, th I think it was uh, Darkwing Dad over in the SDGC Discord. They had mentioned, like, well, I guess I got to go um, go hurry up and buy the rest of the stuff I want before this thing happens. Yeah, and um, was it June or July? I think it was July. I'd have July to is the check PS3 that. and PSP stores, and then August mm -hmm. 27th is the Vita storefront. Okay. I don't know if that <laughs> also means that, like, PSP classics available and PS1 classics available on the Vita storefront are already going to be gone or not. I'm going to, I would assume yes, just because I, like, I don't expect Sony to fucking be like gracious about this shit. I don't think so because, um, th there was a, a little side tidbit that said like, if you buy PS4 games or PS5 games that have cross buy enabled, mm -hmm. um, like there's a Vita version for it. If you buy, you can like, you can still buy like the PS4 version, like let's say like five years from now and you will still technically own the Vita version. So you can download that like mm -hmm. five years from now. So I don't imagine that, that would be an issue. Or whatever. Yeah. But um, I, I don't yeah. think there's many PS3 games I missed. Like, maybe I'll, I'll try to get the uh, Siren Blood Curse games. Yeah, but I think I, pretty good. I think I'm mostly going to go, like, on a PS1 buying spree. Like, get the yeah. classic Resident Evils I don't have. Get Dino yeah. Crisis, uh, Parasite Eve, stuff like that. Yeah, and I mean, f for for people that don't have them already, there's so many games that are like locked to PS3 and Vita that like, mm -hmm. it, once the store goes down, you're not gonna be able to get it anymore. You're not gonna be able to get any version of Persona 3 anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I... Direct Guard 3, all those DLCs you won't be able to get. Uh, the Japanese language pack that I think fixes that game oh. and makes it a bit more bearable. You won't be able to get anymore. Fuck, I have to buy the DLCs for Dragon Guard 3. Yep, so do I. It sucks. Uh, I mean, what. hell, lots of PS1 games that are on there. Mm -hmm. If you each had a Demon baby Souls, pick... Souls, you have to track down a physical copy of that. I brought this up last lost. week, but Sylvia wasn't here, so I'm just going to say it again, because you mentioned Persona. Like, the PSP version of Persona 2, like, the definitive version from what I understand, mm -hmm. the one that costs, like, hundreds of dollars in the wild, or at least 80-something dollars or whatever, a lot of money, that's going to be gone. And that's like 1999 yeah. on the storefront. Yeah. Jeez. What were you gonna say? It's pretty old storefront. Oh, I was just gonna say, um, is there anything like in particular that you would recommend people like go out and grab before this shutters? Like, I would say probably um, Persona Three. What was it called? FES. The yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's our, that's the or portable. Version. Yeah. yeah, I would uh, say like the portal version is really good yeah. because you can actually control what your teammates do, so they don't. I was fucking, about to say the same thing. I've so they don't that. fucking dick you over on the last boss. Um, and the presentation as a female character. That's and that true. Makes the story yeah. so much better. Uh, mm -hmm. That being said, I, I still like really love the presentation of um, I guess Persona Three proper. You kind of yeah, miss that. Me too. Um, shoot, what else would I say? Because you can uh, still get games like Demon Infamous Souls. and stuff. You can get those physical for like five bucks. Yeah. Um, the, I, I would mostly say like PS1 games, to be honest. 
Yeah. Most yeah. of the PS1 games are pretty economically priced. I think the most expensive one is like 15 bucks or something, and even then... <laughs> They're crazy cheap. I, I would um, say, I, I'm, maybe I'm weird Resident like Evil this. series from one director's cut, a two, th one, two, and three, specifically. Mm -hmm. You can get that for like, I think, under 30 bucks. All of them. Like, I, I, how do I want to word this? Like, you, you had mentioned Demon Souls, a PS3. Yeah. I would, like, I would say there's, I'm not, it isn't even necessarily for Demon Souls, but I would say, like, if there's, like, a remake or, like, a, or just even just, like, um, a remaster that, like, effectively replaces it, I would say, unless you really like preserving stuff, you might be good off of that. Mm. But, yeah, like, stuff fair. for, like, Resident Evil 2 or 3, like, those original games are fundamentally different games from yeah. those remakes. And those are still mm -hmm. uh, definitely worth grabbing. Mm hmm And Resident Evil 1 directors uh, is, like, whatever. I mean, it's not whatever. It's I, hard to find. Whole infamous um, franchise is locked on PS3 Oh, still. you know what? Um, um, no, fe Festival, of, Festival of Blood, the standalone DLC. Yeah. I don't believe oh, that Festival was ever... Blood fucking rules! I don't believe that was ever physical, so... Get that. I think it, yeah. there might have been a disc that included it, but I don't know if it was a disc or if it was one of those like this is the game and the box is different, but inside yeah, the... it's like a download code. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Damn, Infamous is fucking great. Oh, mm -hmm. Don't remind me, I love that one series of my favorite. so much. That's um, that is the, the series that got me to buy a PlayStation Three and to then buy a PlayStation game. Four. Every Resistance so. game. I mean, you can get them physical, but like I know for a I fact, just... like the PSP one. Or rather, the Vita one that I played for a second. Eh, it was okay. Um, the Killzone Liberation on PSP. I, that's like, I remember playing that in high school and realizing like, oh my god, it's like a tactical shooter, but Killzone. It was fucking cool as hell. Oh, um, Blaine, for you, I would recommend uh, the best Killzone game is actually Killzone Mercenaries. That's on Vita. I would recommend you pick that up. Okay. That one, and wasn't there a Resistance game on Vita too? Yeah, I, I just mentioned it. It's it's pretty. Oh yeah, that one. It was a little weird in the beginning. Um, was it Resistance we, Retribution? We, um, yeah. Yeah, that one Crazy I heard was fire. also very very good. <laughs> would there be just anything that? Are... Would there be anything that you would recommend people grab Mesa? Or you don't have much of a history with PlayStation, I guess, right? No, no. Everything, I, everything I personally like feel strongly about has already been said. The thing I feel the yeah. strongest for <laughs> is the Infamous series. So yeah, like one, two. The fact that those have not been released again is just so baffling. It's painful, and I and I don't see them making another one because why would they? Why would they make a superhero game when they have the superhero? Mm -hmm. So I would be. Oh wait, I'd be happy one. with another developer getting that franchise. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Parasite Eve. One and two. Yeah. People who haven't yeah, picked yeah, it up. Two. Please pick um, out Parasite One and Two. Let's say 3D mm -hmm. Dot Game Hero has. I a, was just um, about to mention that. I wasn't yeah, sure if that that, that has a digital version. I think if you're into Disgaea, I don't really like Disgaea that much. If you're into Disgaea, I want to say three and four don't have physical versions on Vita. Mm -hmm. Um, those might be worth picking up again. Dr Direct Guard Three and its DLCs. Um. Trying to think of anything else. Yeah, Persona, all the Persona Two and Persona Three, whichever version you decide to get. The I haven't played it, but I know the Sui Koden series, uh, one, two, three, and I think four are all on PS3 across yeah. the PS1 and PS2 classics. And I think whatever ones are on PS1, I think you can play. You can play on the Vita. Um, uh, there, you can get physical versions of it for not too expensive, but uh, fi uh, Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions. Oh yeah, War of the Lions is uh, really good on Vita. Does yeah. anyone remember PlayStation Minis, where those were like vi those were exclusively digital only games? Yep. Those are all gonna go away. Yeah, someone we think we knew, sucks. Someone we know had one of those and was really mad because they didn't make Crisis Core a digital game. They only sold it physical. Mm -hmm. Yep only sold a physical even if they sold a digital the rights would eventually have expired they wouldn't they would have taken it down to the store mm -hmm. so that game is only accessible by piracy which i mean hey my other thing damn them shutting the store down sure is not doing a great job discouraging just a uh, <laughs> home brewing your ps3 and vita Literally. i mean at least ps1 emulators are very yeah. easy to get and i mean i mean uh 
Nexus wasn't here last week when I brought it up, but I'm trying to get Cole's, Cole's, Cole's Delka to work on PC. Just copies of that game yeah. at 599 fucking dollars, and Sony just never released that game on the PlayStation Store. Oh. If you so. have access to the Japanese PSN for PS3, I apparently LSD Dream Emulator is available. To oh, PS3. yeah! Yes. Oh, that's a good one. You know what? It's it's dab time because uh, oh, Rama Nomad points out that uh, the Vita is indeed the best platform to play Dang and Rampa. It's the best platform uh, to play a lot also, of things. Also, yeah, another you can play thing it alone about... without anybody seeing you. Exactly. Another thing about, good point. <laughs> another thing about LS LSD Dream is that you don't need to know Japanese to actually play it. No, there's like little to no Japanese in it. So there's the only elements that you will, will be lost on you is um because my boyfriend has played it for me a lot at <laughs> watching it. and we like he'll ask me like tell me what to do when we play it together. Um literally like there's some dreams that are just a screen of text and for he looked it up once. It's like those are apparently like recorded recorded messages like based on actual dreams that the creator mm -hmm. had so yeah. that is that does suck you lose out on that but that's literally the only thing that you miss out on everything else you still can experience because it's all just surreal dream yeah. shit uh and then um as far as like the F the final fantasy games like there are ports onto other consoles and stuff there's steam versions and you know all mm -hmm. that but the PS3 version that you get digitally is going to be like a near perfect emulation of the PS1 version. And yep. final for seven, eight, and nine, the PS3 version <laughs> is still the prettiest looking versions of those games. It's yeah. as good as playing it on a PS1. You can, for what it's worth, you Square does still sell physical versions of seven, eight, and nine, and also uh, the four, the four and Chrono Trigger pack, the anthology pack with five and six. Um, they're not, you know, like, they, they basically sell them. They're they're basically burnt discs, but yeah, like Square Enix, and they can still produce them, so they do, um, which is awesome. No, it is awesome. I specifically rebought a bunch because I know my yeah. old discs are going to shit, and if I can't get them buffed, I wanted <laughs> to make sure I was able to still play them in that format. Mm -hmm. Um, the like the only thing I would say is like. Yeah, like, I mean, there's better ways to play 6 and 5, because apparently those PS1 versions have some, like, lag issues. Not as, people yeah. will say it's the worst thing ever, it's really not that bad. It's noticeable if you played a lot of the Game Boy Advance. But other than that, it's like, eh. Let's go ahead and move on. Oh, sorry, sorry, um, sorry. The PlayStation Portable version of Final Fantasy 4, that is physical, but still, that's digital, it's going to be easier access and cheaper. As yep. well as, I don't know if 1 through 3 are available digital or not but those are like the definitive version of those games yeah. aside from three being on ds uh, uh, one has a bunch of new cutscenes in it yep it's cool. nice uh let's see uh owners in desperate need of extra data storage on their playstation 5s are in luck as sony's announced that a firmware update will be released at some point this summer to allow for expanded ssd space uh, the update in question will activate the PlayStation 5's M.2 expansion slot, which was reportedly disabled ahead of time for future updates. Mm -hmm. However, this comes with some heavy quality of life drawbacks for those looking to alleviate storage woes, mm -hmm. as the update allows the system's cooling fans to increase their speed in order to keep up with any supplementary SSDs. Uh, your nice and quiet PlayStation 5 may not stay so silent if you opt in for extra storage. Uh, that being said, the console's measly 667 gigabytes of usable storage is already creating issues for countless users, so the trade-off might be worth it for some. Um, I Okay, so last generation of consoles, and even on my PC, I have a shit ton of storage. I, I would have a 4 terabyte external on both my Xbox One and my PS4, and I just had everything I owned downloaded at any given time, and even on... It's not, probably not even fair to bring up my current PC because it's I spent entirely <laughs> way too much money on this. <laughs> I can b have everything on there. Um, mm -hmm. Not necessarily on it, my SSD, which is only a terabyte, but um, I don't... I, I did not... Once I got my Xbox One X, I kind of stopped playing most of my games on PlayStation 4 specifically for the fan because that thing is a fucking jet engine and I do not want to deal with that. I'll, I will stick with the uh, smaller hard drive, if that's the case. Mm. And plus, my PlayStation 5 is not really my primary gaming console, so I don't see why I would make that trade off if I'm not having too many things on there in the first place. But uh, what about you guys? 
Remember when <laughs> 60 gigabytes was like a lot of space? Hmm. You, had to, you had to shell out 600 bucks for that one. Yeah. The PS3. <laughs> Uh, so I have a simple fix for this, gamers. Just delete Cold War. You'll feel better <laughs> afterwards. Delete Cold War. Because you'll have or, all the space in the fucking sure. world. Hey, crazy idea. Just delete games when you're done playing them. <laughs> yes, for the love of God. Yeah. Like, I don't understand mm. why this is so hard for people. When me and my boyfriend beat, uh, beat Sack, Sackboy, done. Deleted. When I beat Persona 5 Strikers, done. Deleted. Like, I was like, I was like, I'm done. I'm not coming back to these. Boof. I wonder done. how big... Me some game space. I, I have ADHD. I need to jump around between 20 games, Sarah. How yeah, no, big is PS5 version of FF14? I'm trying to recall. It's pretty, I, sure it's pretty it's, damn big. But it's just like, uh, it's a... It's a simple know, it thing of just yet. delete games when you're done with them. Like, yeah. it's not I mean, hard. I mean, yeah. the case that I can see this being valid is, like, if you have multiple <laughs> multiplayer games, you play with, like, different friends. So you have, like, Call of Duty, you have Siege, you have Destiny. Like, I, I can see how you would want all of these, like, simultaneously because you're playing with multiple friends, like, on whatever <laughs> given whim or whatever. But um, generally, yeah, I think if you're if you're sticking like single player games, stick to one, delete it when you're done, and just move on. So yeah, um, so um, and another thing about this is also like the price of how much this is gonna cost. Because oh, yeah. like, because I got because like, so here I am looking at right now a uh, one terabyte PCIe 4.0, uh, uh, Sabrent uh, NVMe SSD. It's one hundred and fifty dollars, and this might not even be fast enough for the spec in PlayStation Five. So, for um, um, for reference, the uh, Xbox the series consoles, the Xbox series consoles, the expansion for that is, I believe, two hundred dollars for an extra terabyte. Mm-hmm. Somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah, I know just, that that is, like... is this necessarily going to be an issue for anyone here? I guess uh, aside yeah. from Sarah. No, it won't be for me because I delete I my shit. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'm not, not going to buy be an it issue. because I can't afford to fucking spend that much money. I, fucking, it was a mm. big expense for me spending 100 or 80 bucks on a fucking two terabyte for my mm. PS4 and then for my fucking Xbox. Yeah, like, I just I just delete stuff, so this isn't going to be a problem. I'm not going to invest in this. Just what don't play you? video games. Put the video <laughs> games down. Yeah, just, just, just say yeah, no. Just hey, you just know what's free? No. The sun. Yeah, the sun's free. Follow yeah, try looking at it. It's free. pretty fun. No, no, no. You know what's free? <laughs> the first fucking sixty levels of Final Fantasy fourteen. So just fucking do that. It's and then true. There's don't some. Buy any other <laughs> there's some copy pasta that you know the Final Fantasy fourteen community loves posting over and over yes. again because you know they never watched that episode of SpongeBob where he gets his pants ripped. Uh, they he never they never watched that one. <laughs> yeah. However, um, do you know there is uh, on April thirteenth? There's a PS5 beta you can try out if you want. There's new 3D audio and some 4K icons, and I think the controller rumbles or something. <laughs> the controller rumbles or something. Does it do it when I plug the damn thing in on PC? Where's my update, Yoshi P? I I'd like it. Okay, okay, here's, do I get 4K uh, icons? Uh, Mesa, go ahead. I was just gonna say I found. Um, I just just looking it up. I found a uh, Western Digital Black. One terabyte NVMe that does look like it matches the speed spec of the PS <laughs> of the uh, PS5, and right now, brand new, it's two hundred and twenty-one dollars. So that, that's about the Jesus same. Christ. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I guess so. We can isolate the variables. Like, let's say money's not an issue for uh, the expansion. Would do you be willing to make the trade off for expanded storage for an increased? fan like yeah. we, we don't know how no. loud it would be yeah. no but... no mm. see yes. see no. for me probably everyone, I don't need expanded storage everyone complained <laughs> about the fan on the ps4 i kept my ps4 under my bed so i didn't hear shit the entire That's time i played it i have never heard i have never fine. heard of someone putting their console under their bed that just sounds like you're gonna wake up to everything no, on plenty, fire. There's plenty of space and plenty of I air. Have, it's fine. I have my PS4 on like the because there's like a foot shelf on my desk, but I don't. I haven't used my desk as a desk in a long time, aside from like 
the side of it that has my laptop, which is like a pull-out piece. Anyway, <laughs> fucking, instead of my feet, I have my PS4 Pro there. I'll be real. I have don't think I've ever heard my PS4 Pro's fan, or, like, mm-hmm. whatever I have heard, I just feel like maybe everybody's kind of over-exaggerating. You are they so are. fucking lucky. I will, I will boot up God lucky. of War on my PS4, and I will let you listen to how loud that shit gets. My, I have my the Pro, favorite, I could do the same thing. Yeah, my favorite memory is when The Order 1886 came out, and I played it on a base PlayStation 4. That thing sounded like a fucking rocket yeah. ship. That thing was like, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> like, I mean, I also play with like headphones deep, right? most of the time. Yeah, uh, honestly, on. this is a so. problem that if you play with headphones, you will almost completely nullify. Well, I yeah. feel like even if you live with other people, um, it, it'll probably annoy the shit out of them too. Like, it's, it's fucking screaming them. at you. <laughs> it's a it's white noise, essentially. Yeah, I feel like once you get used to the sounds of the fans, it's legitimately white noise, unless you're doing it's something kind of that you're not supposed to be hearing the fans with. Like yeah, when I was watching Godzilla versus versus Khan and my PlayStation 5 went, oh god, is there a disc in the disc tray? And it went, Rrr. oh my and dude, like, the, yeah. <laughs> even when you're not playing the game, it just like once in a while, it's just like, is there a disc? Is there a disc? Let me check. Like, damn, I'm just like, dude, chill. It's like, please stop. There's a, there, it's like, there is a disc in there. We get it. Please stop. Like, it caught me so off guard the first time because like, the shit I, out of me. I went through a couple games on my PS5, like just digitally. It's like, oh, a console is nice and quiet. This is amazing. And then I think and then it you was, put um, in the disc and it's like, yeah, and then I put in Valhelm just like, whoa, this thing makes noise. What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, I booted up Ghost Ghost of Tsushima for the first time, and the poor PlayStation 5 was like, oh god, what is this? And I'm like, this is the last gen game, calm the fuck down. <laughs> like, it's okay, I promise. But it, yeah, I feel like the fans, honest to god, the fan is white noise. I feel like if you've no. dealt with it for long enough, like, you will hear it when it comes on, and you either turn up the TV, or you just don't pay attention to I, it. I live in a place where... Others enjoy quiet, so not the white noise is an issue. <laughs> but um, that's a that's I, that's a you problem. Point. Just say no to video games. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I don't think I'd be willing to make that uh that trade off personally. I'll I'll, I'll stick with. I will prioritize a quieter machine over storage that I that I know at least I don't need because like Sarah said, just delete shit when you don't just need delete. it. Yeah. Yep. Or just let buy it an go. Xbox. Just let it go. I know just I like Cold War as much go. as I do, but I deleted that shit. I was like, I'm out. <laughs> like, you like, have I can't the do this storage anymore. space. My scanner sensed it. <laughs> just said, delete. let it go. Let it go. Delete. delete. Um, should we just go ahead and get into what we've been up to? Yes. Oh, sure. Sylvia, you want to go ahead? Oh, oh! When was the last time I was on? I'll pretend I did all that in a week. Uh, I bought some Transformers. <laughs> Does anyone care about the Transformers I bought? I, I, I did. bought Transformers. Uh, I bought Grimlock and Beast Wars Megatron. Hey, they're both pretty cool. They turn into T Rexes. Nice. Uh, I don't have a webcam, so I can't show you. Yeah, they um. So one of the new lines is it's Transformers War for Cybertron, right? And it's a trilogy. It's a Netflix trilogy. And they did, um, so they, they started with Siege, which all takes place on Cybertron, and then they did Earthrise, which is supposed to take place on Earth. The show absolutely doesn't. Um, <laughs> but they all have, like, their Earth, it's all, like, toys of their Earth mode, so it's all, like, the G1 characters and stuff. And now they're doing Kingdom, which has a bunch of Beast Wars characters in it. So, like, Beast Wars and Megatron's there and stuff like that. Uh, that's pretty cool. It's been fun. Uh, unfortunately, it's been hard to get stuff, because scalpers will just immediately get everything. How much uh, do they go for, or online. how much are they supposed to be? Um, well, let's see. Going into the store, Grimlock and Megatron, they were both like 40 bucks. Uh, they're probably like close to 60 online. Um, and that's purely because like scalpers have been inflating it. Um, I kind of, honestly, a lot of times I kind of just try not to think about how much they cost. I don't really like thinking about it that much. And then I, because I, <laughs> I look over at the shelf and I see all the ones that I have and I'm like, I don't want to think about money. Is it basically um, you see like that PayPal link? You're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but as far as games, uh, I've been playing more 14, finished the raid tier. Uh, I've unfortunately had to deal with uh, Party Finder, playing with like randoms for, for the Savage rating uh, uh-huh. because my static disbanded uh, right before I got like the last piece of gear I need for my samurai. 
So I've how had are, to deal with Party Finder for a couple how weeks bad, now. How bad are randoms in 14? It's like rolling some dice. Because sometimes you'll get a party with eight people that are all competent. They all know what they're doing. And sometimes you get a party with one guy who doesn't know shit and got carried through the fight. And now now they're here in a farm party and they're, they don't know what they're doing. And a lot of times in Savage at 14, at this high level of play, there's certain mechanics where if one person messes up, it's over. You're done. You got to start over. How big are uh, the so um how big are the raids problem. in 14? So they're eight the eight person raids, uh the savage rating. Uh is all eight person. That seems smaller than what I would so have thought um, they would have been. But I guess so, it yeah, means wow. like everyone yeah. really has to pull their shit. Wow. Yeah, for savage rating, people. um it's it's uh two tanks, two healers, four DPS. You're supposed to split it up so that um DPS have there's ranged DPS, so like your bard, machinist with like a gun, uh magic DPS, so like black mage, red mage, and then melee DPS, so like samurai, ninja, monk. Uh you're supposed to have it so that um there's one of each of those, and then one of them is doubled up. Usually it's a caster that's doubled up. Um but yeah, so it's it's eight people. As far as I understand, I haven't really touched too much um, hardcore content in WoW and, and haven't seen too much of it. In 14, there's just a lot more like personal responsibility and there's yeah. a lot more like there's a lot more riding on you to to not fuck stuff up. Wow, it's wow, it's a bit different. Raids are 36 yeah. people. Um, yeah. you have two tanks, four healers, then 30 DPS. Oh my god. <laughs> It, yes, yeah. it's it, it's incredibly chaotic. Um, if you get lucky and you're doing with like uh, Ooh, if if you if if you're <laughs> lucky and you're doing um and you're doing matchmaking for the raid, which is LF LFR, uh, you get two tanks who are super competent who know what they're what they're doing, and they'll 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 stop before every boss and like ask if like everybody's done it. And if yeah. someone says no, they would they like will explain it or or they'll be like, what are you like class wise? The person says mage, they're like, okay, just stay far away and just yeah. fire it and stuff. Or if they're if they're uh if they're melee build, they'll like tell them what to do and like what to like dodge and everything. But if you don't, there's some leeway. Now, if yeah. one of your tanks doesn't know what they're what they're doing, it can get kind of rough. <laughs> but if like three of your DPS or like four of your DPS are yeah. like new. Or they just got to looking for raid level. You you should be fine because yeah, they're yeah. just DPS. They can get re revived if they yeah. truly have to. But yeah, um, and, yeah, raids and WoW are much more chaotic. In, uh, in my in my experience with them, them, at least. Oh, you go, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, but yeah, in my experience with WoW raids, at least is as long as your tanks are competent, your heal healers are competent, you're mostly okay. Yeah. DPS yeah, just good. has to focus on not pulling ads, uh, yeah. or, or, or taking out ads in, in the middle of a battle. Um, fucking dodge AOE attacks. Don't just stand. I don't care if you're a mage. I'm a mage. Dodge that shit. Move, move, move. Yeah. <laughs> you have a teleport. Teleport the fuck out of the way. Yeah, um, and cast. Um, but generally, time. but generally, just because like that higher number, there, there's definitely a lot more, um, yeah, a lot less uh, personal responsibility. But I don't, I, I, I don't think there, there's definitely raids that are a lot harder than others. But like, if you're playing DPS, it's relatively smooth sailing as long as you're semi competent. Uh, that's that's so probably a mean be... way to put it, but. 14, you'll That's have something <laughs> like, um, I don't know, E12S, right? You'll have a mechanic. It's not actually called this. This is what the community calls it. You'll have a mechanic called Lion's Rampant, right? Lion's Rampant, all eight players are going to get marked uh, on something. And they all have the responsibility to do what that mark entails. And if one person fucks it up, it's almost guaranteed to be a wipe. Oh, shit. As in the game yeah. marks you and says, like, go do X, or you know you have yeah. to do Yeah, so, thing. like, uh, you'll have either, um, you'll be one of the four players that's tethered, in which case you have to align, you you and the other three people have to align the tethers correctly in, like, pre-marked spots, and then um, there's, like, a big fire blast from a big lion that uh, the people that aren't tethered have to bait in a specific order. So, like, mm -hmm. every everyone gets paired off, uh, and they, they all do the mechanic. Uh, and again, like, if one person messes it up, uh, it's basically gonna be a wipe. Yeah, wow I... doesn't do that. You just yeah. you just gotta say, hey, DPS, do this, take do this. All right, let's go. And it's like, hope none of us don't all die. 
I mean, my yeah. experience on, like, because I haven't played to, like, any of the stuff that uh, Sylvia has. I've done... I'm in the middle of Heaven's Word, so the biggest raid that I've done... I haven't even att- attempted the uh, the extremes and any of that, because mm. I, don't, I have never had a party to play with. Um, I've done, you know, the Crystal Tower raid. The, yeah. Uh, and, and from my experience, as lo- in Final Fantasy XIV specifically... As long as you're willing to listen, like it's it's yeah. It's, people don't. You'll have people that get mad at newbies, but like as long as you're not that person who just doesn't listen and just tries to do whatever you want and like is an asshole. Nine times out of ten, even if you fuck up two or three times, like as long as you oh yeah at least say like I'm sorry I did this. What am I supposed to do? As long as you work with the people who know what they're doing, like you won't. You'll be okay. What isn't tolerated is like when people just act like complete shitheads. That's when yeah. you have people just go fuck this and quit. What is, <clears throat> I think, an uh, uh, a very, it's, it's something that I've noticed a lot more recently in fourteen as as fourteen's got bigger. Is there's a mentality that people have called the toxic casual, which is, uh, it's a player who is doing like hardcore content at a kind of a more casual level and if anyone tells them hey you could be doing this better ah oh, fuck off don't tell me i could do this better yeah that's my least favorite mentality is the mentality of someone who's like doesn't want to improve past what they're doing and just wants to like skirt by because it's like this is a this is a team-based game and there's seven other <laughs> people here and you're wasting all of their time you have you have msq for that shit if you yeah exactly that. Which you still have to do dungeons, but like at least with the like, I mean, yeah. fuck. If you if you, I remember doing Praetorium the first time and be like, oh my god, this is so confusing and so, but yeah. so cool and blah, blah blah. And now I'm just like, oh my god, can these cutscenes be done so I can kill the three bosses and run through it? It's just you're like that. Yeah, it's whatever. Yeah. I at least I would say, um, I would imagine that it functions the same way as in WoW, but like if someone's just being an issue, you can just boot them from the group. Um, but so I feel- one of the unfortunate things with like party finder for savage content is like if one person drops a lot of times a lot of other people will just be like i don't want to wait for another person and then just leave yeah, yeah wow is the complete opposite wow no. people wait <laughs> like mm-hmm. if like if someone drops patient. in in a raid like if a dps drops or if a tank drops or if a healer yeah. drops people will just stand there and wait like yeah. people will, will start throwing toys around or they'll start dancing or they'll just start like chat chatting it up until like, someone gets there i feel like that stuff's like oh, what's one game that pisses me off in um i guess two two of the shooters i just kind of like rotate between playing uh really annoying when your siege teammates drop out and yeah. it's suddenly like a 2v5 you're like i there, there's no realistic way f- way for me to win this i have to take the l i have to quit and then but that's you might get, when like, you put normally on a win, though, is when it's 2v5. It's when you normally win, <laughs> yeah. because that, like, because that side of you comes out and you're like, I'm not fucking gonna lose this. I, I would like to say that happens, but it's, it is very rare. <laughs> but, the, but the other game that hurts the most, when, like, even one person drops out, is when you're playing, like, uh, Battle Royale, like, Apex. Just, if you lose yeah. a teammate, right as you're dropping, you're like, I'm not winning this. I'm not even going to win like a fight against a squad because it's three to two and you're, you're just fucked. It's, it's not going to happen. What's the average wait time for DPS in a, like a, you know, like a late game raid or something like that. Um, wow. Oh, no, I'm, I'm in, in wow. Cause oh, I wow. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, it depends. Um, late game. It depends on the time of when you're, uh, of when you're trying to get it. Now, if it's when blizzard releases the, uh, the, AHC mounts, which is the uh, head of the curve mounts, which come near the end of an X pack, where like b- or b- before when the next raid launches, that it can take anywhere from like ten to fifteen minutes. It's normally shorter than that. Now, if you're doing it before that or after that, or if you're still doing a raid that you're in the item level range for, it it's honestly Blaine. It depends on the day that you're doing it if you're doing it on tuesday which is reset day or wednesday thursday friday you most it's mostly going to take you 15 to 20 sometimes less than that now if you're doing it sunday monday which is near reset because what so what happens is if you don't get the raid done and you stop after a boss the game saves saves your progress Mm -hmm. so the next time you queue say you get to a part of a raid on saturday then you queue again on sunday the game will instantly queue you in a group that is at that same boss and it's already marked that you've killed those other bosses 
But then once yeah. Tuesday hits, that thing restarts and you have to do it again. So it honestly depends on the day that you're queuing. Well, Sunday, longest, Sunday, yeah, Monday, like, it can Sunday, Monday, it can take up to 30. No, yeah, sorry. Okay, Sunday, good. Sunday, Monday can take up to 30. But again, you're normally not waiting that long. That is just an estimate. Okay. Like it's like um, the game literally says estimated wait time. So like it's not yeah. guaranteed it's gonna take like 20 minutes. It could take 10, it could take 15. So the point Sorry, it's incredibly made... complicated. No, it's it's credit it, it is incredibly complicated. It's fine. Um Sylvia, what's the longest you've ever waited for um, something it's in Final Fantasy 14? Bit more difficult to quantify because then you're doing savage rating, you aren't like queuing into it, you're just going into the like the party list and going okay, this person put up E12S and they have a spot open. They have a melee spot. I'll go join it. Mm -hmm. And then you're just kind of waiting for it to fill from there. Um, so it's a bit more difficult to like quantify, like, if you, are you waiting longer because you're a melee? Are you waiting longer because people just don't want to do the okay. fight? Yeah, I want to say I going with that, but I've last week, that I think I sat in a party finder for E11S the day after reset happened on Wednesday. I want to say I sat in it for maybe 40 minutes. Waiting for a healer. I see, yeah, because I've I've had times where like I wanted to do one of like I wanted to try one of the either either the extremes like the ultimate weapon. I was yeah. like, oh, this is like seem it says it's populated, so it can't take that long. And I was literally sitting there for like an hour and a half. Yeah, just so nothing. for hard content like that, no one queues into it, and at least in American data centers, no one queues sure. into that stuff. They all go into like the party finder and then go, hey, I want to do a party for Ultima Weapon EX. And then they gather their people up, go for Ultima Weapon EX. You wouldn't actually need a party of eight people. You'd maybe just be fine with, I mean, hell, you'd probably be fine with three people. Mm -hmm. uh, you can solo that fight if you want. Um, be fine with like wow. three people and go, oh, yeah, OK, we're good. And then you queue into it um, with those three people. Um, yeah, the only time that you'll see people queue into hard content is actually in um, the Japanese data center. What people will do is they'll use Party Finder for learning a fight, and once they learn the fight, they actually queue into it, and then they just queue in with randoms. Uh, that's the only time that's actually used. Okay. Very interesting uh, cultural difference there. But yeah, as far as 14 goes, um, just crossing my fingers that I can get my weapon and my chess piece uh, on Tuesday when reset happens so I can get best and saw before uh, next patch drops uh, next Tuesday. Nice. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to toss the magic conch to myself just because I haven't talked about uh, what I've been playing on podcasts for a while. I usually defer just because we're running low on time. Uh, I, I have a giant list of stuff I have not talked about. Um, I'll talk, talk a little bit about Demon Souls and then probably Evil Within. Uh, so Demon Souls, I have had it basically. No, I've had it since Christmas because my girlfriend's the one that bought it for me. I've just constantly been putting it on the back burner because I've been telling myself, "Oh, I'm not in the mood for it. I'll wait till like the backlog lightens." And now it's at the point where most of my backlog is gone. I'm just like, "Oh fuck!" There's this thing I told myself I was gonna do. It's gonna be a pain in the ass. It's gonna be hard. I'm gonna have to look up wikis. Like, how do I get through this door? Where is this fucking obscure key or whatever? And I just didn't feel like dealing with it. But I finally started yesterday, and I'm reminded that I love the Soul series, and it's incredibly fun. Oh, yeah. Um, one thing I didn't see a lot of people talk about in in reviews or coverage or whatever. I'm, I've been playing it with headphones. It like the sound mm. design is fucking the amazing really in there. Good. It is, it is so good. Like I th very good, especially when there's at when there's like dickhead uh, enemy placement like around corners. And you can just hear him yeah. breathing. I'm like, oh, that helps a lot. Or um, something that's always helpful is you can hear people like reloading like crossbows oh, yeah. and stuff, and you mm. can tell where they are from the controller and the 3D audio. It's really yep. awesome. Um, one thing I totally forgot about and like this kind of maybe shares a little bit of dna with or no, maybe not so but with bloodborne is that the health items are consumables versus yes. recharging each time you get to bonfires mm -hmm. so there's a lot of pros and cons because um in bloodborne like, you'd find like plenty of situations where you just have to farm blood vials but every time you go back to a lantern uh because you can only carry 20 at a time in bloodborne but each time you go back you, it regenerates from like whatever existing pool that you have like just in your storage um it's not exactly the same in demon souls but like i feel like the effect yeah. it has is 
because you have a pool you can you can either buy stuff you can find it off enemies but basically you have less of an incentive to constantly go back to a bonfire so i find myself mm. taking a lot more risks but at the same time if i know i'm close to getting to the next section or whatever i i find myself pushing myself more to make that advancement because going back to square one at uh they're not, they're not called bonfires what are they called uh the arch uh, stones the arch stones I, so like instead of being like i don't know this is risky i'm blowing estes flask i might as well go back um i'm just like yeah no i've made it this far i'm i'm not going to be magically gain more healing items by retreating so let's just push through this and get it done um so that's a interesting dynamic even though there's literally the first souls game um yeah it's definitely taken me a bit of an adjustment to come back to it after playing Sekiro like five times where I'm just parrying everything. It's a, um, it's a very different game. The parry is not... It's it's stronger in some ways and, and less of an incentive in others. I've been, I've been using it sometimes, but I the yeah. ultimate strategy is still just do a regular block that stuns yeah. the enemy anyway and just slash at them. Regular or, block or, or roll out of the way. Or like the the blue eye uh, enemies I've been running into, like all I've been doing is just circling around them and backstabbing. Yeah. That's, or that's don't even get close and just shoot them with magic. I don't yeah, play these games with magic. I'm not a magic. I'm not a coward. Busted in Demon Souls. <laughs> it is that's so strong playing. in Demon Souls. I refuse. It's so strong. Um, I still don't. Uh, this is probably a question for Nexus, but I don't. I don't remember what the fuck world tendency means. I'm still in the white, which I assume is good. Okay. So. (laughs) (laughs) Hold up a can of worms with this one. World tendency is a very silly system. So your world tendency determines uh, different, different things that will happen in the world, right? So if you're a pure white tendency, you will unlock certain quests, right? Uh, I'll give an example in the, um, the 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 mine are stone right uh with the dragon god um when you're done with that world if you're at white world tendency you unlock a quest where you can talk to a guy and he's like hey can you find help me find this cool sword and if you help him find the cool sword you get the dragon bone smasher which is a big like like dragon slayer guts berserk weapon right uh and then if you're in pure black world tendency you'll unlock uh, other types of npcs right so um different guys will try to attack you or they'll they'll be like oh hey uh can you find this guy and and kill him for me or something like that right um but the way that this works is that you gain white world tendency points by killing a boss and you lose white uh, uh uh world tendency points which pushes it towards black by dying or killing an npc and so essentially what you want to do in demon souls if you want to be sure you get white world tendency is you want to as soon as you finish killing a boss and you're revived in uh in human form instead of soul form you want to immediately go back to the nexus and ju- oh, that's far i got my name by me and you jump off <laughs> uh the highest point and kill yourself so that you're in soul form because if you die in soul form it doesn't affect world tendency at all then, then how do you necessarily constantly um move it towards black tendency because like even if you go into a world and you die you go back to soul form does, does, so that doesn't if you want to push it, it towards black tendency there's an item you can get that turns you back into human form and so you pop that and then just kill yourself in the world so either you you get some enemies to kill you or you'll um or you'll jump off a bridge or um there's like different npcs in the world to like i don't know there's um, there's, I forget his name. There's like one of the knights who will help you in Boletaria. You can just kill him and then it'll push you towards black world tendency. There's basically no reason to go towards black tendency, right? Cause that just makes the yeah. game harder. Makes the game significantly harder. Um, makes a certain weapon deal more damage in black world tendency, which is mostly people just use it for PVP. Um, and then, um, there's a couple quests that you can get. But honestly, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't recommend going towards Black World Tendency on purpose unless you're like pretty familiar with Demon Souls, because it does make this, the game quite a bit harder. This actually really works for me because even in the Dark Souls games, I never use items to uh, regain like human form or whatever. Yeah. I'd rather just I because I figure like there's there's a very limited. I just want to see if I can go through it. Like in I forget the term for it in there. Like I'd, I'd rather stay hollow. 
Yeah. Like, that's how I play those games. So if I just yeah. play it like that, I just, this basically means nothing to me then, right? Essentially, yeah. Okay. Only that... thing is, like, if you have died in human form already, I can it can totally fuck you over, and you might not be able to get, like, the pure white world tendency, which is what unlocks certain quests and stuff. It's a it's an old system that I feel like was never fleshed out in the original, and because the remake is so faithful, they didn't really change it that much. This kind of made the icon on the menu a bit clearer. Okay. Um, it's definitely it's a it's a hell of a weird system. Um, uh, can we come to the consensus? The best way to play these games is by starting starting off naked. Mm, yeah pretty much get, get get that fast roll like like when it when it comes to any of the souls games i i look up like uh whatever pr- equipment load percentage it is so that you can get that fast roll so like in the beginning of the game until i equ- until i increase my endurance so you can get a uh, higher equip load i'm just like i want that fast roll so i have i have shoes on i have gloves on i i have no shirt i'm just a naked boy yeah. running around shirtless i, I just want to roll if I remember correctly, Dark Souls 3 is the only one that, that poses an issue because of the way its armor system is done. Yeah. Like, I think it's something like if you have only, like, if you're missing a pair of gloves or if you are missing a shirt, like, you may as well just not be wearing armor. Yeah. Dark Souls 3. That's weird. If I recall, you get a flat percentage of armor increase just by having something on. And if you have nothing on in that slot, you don't get anything. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. It's, really weird that game is that's, has that's, a lot of questionable decisions didn't they have like a useless stat in there what was it poise or something well, poise, poise is useless everything. in base game yeah okay essentially doesn't do anything uh, i it's guess all, my... it's not quite as bad as resistance in dark souls one which is literally it makes your poison resistance go up wow oh my god <laughs> that's <laughs> that's incredible i i mean it's useful when you're down in um what is it? Was it Blight Town? We have to run across everywhere. Yeah, but you See, can just the get a shield that blocks that. <laughs> it's not nearly yeah. useful enough. No, literally, because it's one area that by the time you get to like, by the time you get to the bottom once, or the, you figure out, oh, I can use the master key and I can go backwards. Like, none of that matters. Or if you mm-hmm. get the shield, the spider shield that is available, I think, in the depths. Like, it, there's so many ways that to circumvent it that don't require you to, to like dump levels into a skill you're never going to use outside of that okay um i guess for my last note on uh demon souls would be i totally forgot you're not supposed to just go like beat one world move on to the next world you're supposed to like jump between them so i think the guide i'm looking at right now it says like do one one then two one then four one then three one um, so you're supposed to be like jumping around between like each, um, each dash segment. Um, I didn't, I did not pay attention to that at first. Cause I'm just like, mm. I want to fight the tower Knight. I remember fighting tower Knight from PS3 demon souls. It was pretty rad. Um, I did not deal shit for damage, but I had yeah. so many souls just like sitting at his feet. I'm just like, I can't just walk away from that. Um, but yeah, I, I beat Tower Knight way earlier than I was supposed yeah. to, and I'm feeling pretty damn good about that. What I always recommend people do is to go to just pick one and then just go there first, right? So let's say uh, I always suggest people go to um, the Shrine of Storms first, so 4 1. There's a lot of really, really helpful uh, items there for basically every build. And if you just do 4 1, there's there's so many items you get out of doing that that really then you can just kind of go anywhere. Okay. Yeah, 4 1 has some useful stuff. Uh, ask me after the show, I can get more specific. Um, but there's um, <laughs> good items there. Nice. But um, yeah, that's basically the game I'm going to be playing. Um, I know at least for the streams. Um, the, the game streams I've been doing, I've just been doing the Evil Within, uh, playing through the DLCs for those, which I haven't played. Um, I haven't played previously because they were mm. paid, they weren't included, whatever. But the mm. Game Pass version on PC does include them now, so cool. uh, enjoying those, but I'll save my Evil Within thoughts for um, for next week, I guess, once I finish up those DLCs. But if I finish those early, probably going to swap over to Demon Souls. Hell yeah. Uh, Sarah, do you want to go ahead? I beat Persona 5 
strikers. The final boss was Persona. It took too long. It took like 30 minutes, and 30 minutes doing like Muso combat really hurts the hand. Is it even a JRPG if you don't fight God at the end? I'm not going to spoil anything, but you aren't wrong. <laughs> It's not a JRPG, then. <laughs> you are, you are That's wrong. Thumbs, thumbs the rules. It but, either has um, to be Hitler or God. But I beat it, and Persona games always have this habit of making me cry like a tiny baby at the end of them. So Persona 5 Strikers was no exception. I bawled my eyes out because I because mm. I love those kids so much. Um, it was a lot of fun. I greatly like re- recommend it if you played Persona 5 and you really liked Persona 5 and you like the kids and you like all the other characters and the new characters yeah. that they made for this one was were so incredible. Blaine, can you please do the honors of a of a singing some more Les Miserables for me, please? Oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> uh, t- I don't know that musical nearly as well as I should. What's a good one? Uh, I just know the beginning. Stars! And their multitude. Perfect. I don't remember the rest. Perfect. Uh, How does I that swear, one go? I uh, I don't know, but all I know is, can you hear the sounds? The sounds of angry men. But I promise this one. all makes sense. Can you hear the people like, I sing, promise this, sing the songs yes, of angry men? Angry men. Yeah. I swear this all makes sense in context. I'm just not going to spoil it, but it all makes sense. Um. Uh yeah, that's really great. I started uh started Monster Hunter Rise. Have not touched it yet because I want to play with friends. Because oh my god, there's so many tutorials. <laughs> it's getting oh, so annoying. Probably, so. Probably it, but yeah, it's good. There's so many. Um, but I started Ghost of Tsushima on Thursday because I finally realized I should probably play this game because I've never played it. Um, it's really cool so far. It's fucking beautiful. Like oh my god. Like, it's every single that. backdrop in that game is insane. And, like, I mean, it's a sucker a sucker punch game. They, like, have this habit of making really good main main characters. Yeah. And I'm already liking Jin, and I'm only, like, an hour in. And I'm like... He's a cool I'm guy. Like, and you I'm see like, I like this all guy. of him. Oh, I am aware! I think after I finished playing <laughs> that game, I was just walking but- around talking to people at a... a, a not long enough talk. It was pandemic time, but it was very weird to me when people in real life did not refer to me as Lord Sakai. Yeah, <laughs> like, Lord. Not- I'm telling you, you see all of that guy except his wiener. Oh, uh, you got me excited for a hot minute. Have Have you seen his booty? No, you I see his, his booty, booty a lot. I'm hyped to see his booty because Jin's a good-looking guy. No, don't see his balls. Aww. But like the one You're a little thing sly I- about it. The one thing that I will say incredibly fast is that I thought the combat was going to be incredibly complicated because when they were like pitching the game and like previews and stuff, it's like, oh, you have all your different stances and you need to pay close attention. And granted, I'm playing on easy because I'm a weak baby child, but like the combat isn't difficult at all. It reminds me of like just normal, not combo based combat, but like light attacks, heavy attacks, break, mm. break guards and stuff. Mm-hmm. Though I wish the health bar was bigger because of all the <laughs> things to make me worry about that. My Series X blocks the health bar because it's too you tall. Just, just move it late on the side. <laughs> the Series X is just too turn tall. It off and first it before the you do bar. that. Oh, I, I will. But it's just um, like, it's so annoying. Like, I can't change the size of it. I can change, like, everything else because there's great ex- accessibility features. But I can't change the size of the health bar and my little, like, parry circles. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> one uh, one little no. weird little pet peeve I have with it, with the combat, there's no lock on. And the, oh, attack, yeah, buttons, and, and the attack buttons are on the face. So, like, in Dark Souls, it works because you can just lock on. But you can even control the camera while you're sim- simultaneously attacking. Yeah. Like you do in like Kingdom Kingdom uh Kingdom Hearts and stuff and like other games that have lock ons. It makes your life easier. I did notice that this one doesn't have it. But I feel like you have that awesome like maneuver to where you just zip between enemies. Yeah. You kinda that don't need to I feel a lock like on. It doesn't make it an issue because I've I've never found it to be an yeah, issue. Yeah, the, the the target acquisition's mm-hmm. pretty good. Like you always hit what you're aiming for. I guess yeah, it's, it's maybe just because you're used to in those types of games, like its absence maybe just sticks out a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, more WoW. I'm finally going to get Jose to raid soon. I don't know wherever he is on Ooh, the screen. Oh, boy. I'm, yeah, oh, I'm going to get him to do the castle. Wow, how impressive. Di- I'm going to get him to do the castle Nathria raid, which is, uh, as many raid groups said, the hardest opening raid that WoW has ever... Oh, Lord. There he goes. 
So uh, I uh, she's quit gonna have first. fun. Uh, I if I haven't quit yet, he's not gonna quit. Um, he I'm did excited quit. To have then he do gave it. up and oh, oh, okay. quit. Yeah, you, Blaine, you called me out so fucking bad on them. Just like I'm fed up with WoW. I don't want to do the end game. Don't want to do any grinding. And, and then, then like literally that same good. night, I'm I'm on there. I'm just Blaine's like you fucking liar. Literally. <laughs> no, I'm excited to see Discord someone doesn't who, lie, bitch. Who, uh, who I hadn't done this raid before I actually do it, because I have done it. I did every single raid wing as it was released, and oh, the last one took three and a half hours. <laughs> oh, Lord. <That> so, <laughs> well, it's because the thing about WoW raids is that it gets released to guilds first, and then looking mm. for raids, which is the easiest tier, okay. gets released three weeks after a new raid. Three, three to four weeks after a new raid gets re- released, the raid gets split in, into tiers. So there's three bosses per tier. And then it yeah. gets released on a bi-weekly basis. So one week you'll get the first three bosses, then two weeks later you'll get the second three. That kind of thing. And um, I did it on a tier basis, so I wasn't doing it all at once. But Jose is going to be doing it all at once! <laughs> Hopefully! Hopefully, I did we'll all see. the I did all the raids in the um in the last expansion, at least the horde ones, because I know there were ones like specific for each faction. But so, yeah, I'm excited to jump back into it. Yeah, this one there is none exclusive, so uh, we're gonna have some fun because <laughs> because it's just one raid, buddy, and giant tits Denathrius is at the end, and it's gonna be fun. <laughs> he has five phases, friend. Get ready. We're I'm, gonna I'm have ready. To, I'm ready to fire Mage it up. I got contingency plans. Shit goes south. I'm just gonna freeze myself in a block for ten seconds. Chill the fuck out. And I turn into a oh giant demon. Let's go. <laughs> I, I do love that the fire mage has like has like four or five different contingencies. Just like oh, yeah. no one's healing me. I'm gonna dip. Uh, but anyway, that's all I've been doing. Nice. Um. Mesa and Blaine, do you uh, guys want to go? Uh, have I done anything new? I'm no. Waiting for Mesa. Playing Street Fighter Five and Monster Hunter. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I played more Monster Hunter. Um, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good game. I hear it's pretty good. <laughs> a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot, a lot of fun. I mean, like, I'm like upset because I can't play it and i'm wait oh wait no i actually fucking bought it this last week and i've been playing it like non-stop oh hell yeah um i the full story is like i last literally literally last week after the podcast i was still trying to beat shit in uh final fantasy 10 thank you fucking sylvia for the help on that one chocobo thing by the hell way. yeah um Choco i have since racing game sucks <laughs> it's the worst thing ever but it's it's not the worst thing ever by itself once you realize mm. what you have to do, like the whole purpose of it, it's like, oh god, this is just the most tiresome bullshit. Um, but like, I've gotten every weapon that I care about. I'm not getting Wakas because I'm not fucking playing Blitzball. Wakas is pretty bad. Like, I don't I remember Riku's is bad too, right? Uh, it's not as bad. It's if you like Cactors and like, oh, and yeah, think, if you think now. they're really cute. It's actually a really fun side quest. It, the only no. problem with it is that you have to walk back and forth to one point every single step of the way, God. so it's just artificial. Like, Yuna's is easy. They give you that one. Yeah, I mean, as long as you know like what to use, like as long as they know, okay, get Anima for like at least the last three. Okay, you're no. good. You win. Pretty easy. Anima is literally like God. Anima is what happens. When you realize, damn, we may we may have made this game just a little bit too hard in the end game. Here's a win button. <laughs> Look at that cat! Oh my god, such a cute cat. But no, um, I'm like right at the end of Final Fantasy X. I'm about to start the Attack on Sin, and then um, I'm not gonna go into full details here because it's it's kind of personal. But um, I was gonna end originally buy a copy physical from a friend that didn't work out, but instead I was actually able to get a really good. I was I got a, I got my hands on a gift card. And I basically ended up paying like twenty five dollars and change for the digital deluxe version of Monster oh, Hunter. Yeah. This, I really liked World a lot. I'll still go back and play it at some point, probably if my friend, my other friend Claudia, doesn't get a Monster Hunter Rise soon. 
but like or her and my her and my boyfriend because they live together but um this one like i don't know how to describe it i've seen people complain on online about that like you know it, it feels weird it, i don't like that it it doesn't have as it's not as story focused or like it's going back to we're separating like we're having a base baseline story and then here's offline here's online i kind of love uh, that about it absolutely mm. it's like, so good like i'm not not that i don't i don't not that i don't dislike not having more of a story i'm always a story oriented gamer but like the way this works of just like okay go fucking have fun find the thing you like doing and just do it here's single player it's right here because with world it was it got confusing to figure out like what is implied to be multiplayer what is implied because everything was just kind of everything there was no specific as far as i remember there wasn't any like these are single player missions these are multiplayer missions there was more like here's everything you can do maybe don't do these harder ones without a party but you can kind of try it if you want here's like some easier ones this one's literally like here's the multiplayer area it's not that it's like super hard but enemies take a lot more damage it's just a mm -hmm. bigger process so you want to go in there with a team and really figure shit out you want to just knock the shit out of things and get your fuck, fucking cool shiny armor and play dress up here's single player just play that for as long and that's what i've been doing it's dope it's really good it's that's really it. really good and it's on the switch is Mo mm -hmm. will monster hunter do any thing to get new people into because i tried monster hunter world and it just did not click with me whatsoever like in the four hours i played does this do anything to change that mm. i'm not sure yeah um at least for me personally i think it does a really good job of uh, uh of starting you slow mm-hmm um and ramping it up little, yeah. um cuz i think one of the problems with monster hunter especially when you play with friends is that you play with someone that you know and they'll say okay let's do this quest and then you start it and you're like why am i constantly taking damage oh you didn't take a cool drink oh yeah it's yeah. in the chest you should have taken a cool drink like, oh you didn't get the glorp glorp <laughs> berries to make your glorp glorp juice wow well, get yeah. fucked <laughs> um and I think the game does uh, a lot to avoid problems like that. Um, it's also just fun to ride your dog. Oh, yeah. The fact that I don't have to stop to use my whetstone anymore is a mm. goddamn godsend. Absolutely. I like, just don't um, like how there's so many tutorials. Like, like, I can't walk five inches without the game being like, yeah. well, you know how to walk, yeah. and I'm like, yes! Yeah, but Sarah, okay, here's the problem with that. I mean, you're not wrong. It's just that, like, because, again, I've only played World. From what I've been told before World, this this is the best it's been as far as, like, actually getting people to learn how to play the game. Because one of the... Okay. I've heard... You, you, Mesa, Sylvia, correct me if I'm wrong. But one of the biggest hurdles for this game, like, I guess what Jose was also getting at, was, like, just getting new players involved and, like, actually teaching them, like, how to play. A lot of it was seemed to just be, like, you just gotta figure it out or you gotta learn from other players or look it up. Mm -hmm. I actually prefer having at least things pop up. Like, I go to the supply box and it pops up, like, hey, so these are your items that you really, you want to check this every time you start a quest because there'll be, like, health items and food items, but they'll also usually be, like, a quest-specific item that you do want to grab and have just in case and use um and it'll also say like oh hey like keep in mind if you access this quest in multiplayer you're all accessing a pool so don't be a greedy asshole and take like all the healing items take the four that are in a stack take the three that are in a stack um my only real like the only weird thing i find I, the only real complaint i have as far as like game itself is it feels weird that like i can go online but i can either i can't just make an invite a friends only room I have to either make a password room or an open room. And that's it. Unless there's something I missed, in which case I'm just a dummy. I feel like mm -hmm. even in games that don't necessarily make like crazy um, advances in innovation just because like that fan base already loves um, what, what that series is fundamentally. I think mm -hmm. uh, quality of life changes like you mentioned with the dog and then with um, the whetstone. I feel like those actually go an incredibly long, t a long way, especially if you're dumping so many hours into it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, 
in World, when I started playing World, Iceborne had already came out. So, like, I was already in it where they had the whole, like, okay, here's your fucking special weapon, weapon right at the top that we want you to buy because it's the most powerful thing and it will just rocket you through the base game no matter what style you're on. Like, it is literally designed to be, and that, and it won't, like, it won't wear out. It, you won't have to sharpen it until you get to the end game, Iceborne, and then, you know, that's where the quote-unquote real game starts for you at this point. The fact that, like, if you're not using something like that, at least at least two or three times a hunt, you are going to have to break that whetstone out. Not have to, but, like, you're going to want to. Because I'm, I'm neurotic about it. So I see it go into... If I, if I have a yellow, orange, red, if I see it go into orange, I use it. If I'm close to orange, I use it. I sometimes forget when I'm on, like, other hunts, and I'll be like, oh, I just hit red. I should probably whetstone the next time. Com- co- company that, having to do that two or three or even four times in one hunt with, like, having to just stop and do it, and then recollect yourself, then go find the monster. Like, it's just so much easier to be like, okay, on the way to where, the as the monster is running away, I can now do my whetstone and just, like, actually keep the pace up. I don't, it's not these giant roadblocks of stop, start, stop, or, start, stop, start. Or even, um, I'm currently fighting the monster and don't have mm. the space or time to whetstone. I'll ride mm. my dog while doing it to avoid their attacks. Like, exactly. It's very, it's very good. Also, the fucking, um, what's it called? The new, the new thing. Uh, the, the bugs. I always yeah. get the bugs, the wire bugs. Yeah, They're yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're tight. Flies. My god, like, I unlocked switch attacks. So, like, I have the one where if I, if I hold the wire, but wire fly button or bug button and I hit X, I fucking rock it into the air with my switch axe and do like a giant, like, I basically do a fucking, uh, Oh god, what's the attack from Devil May Cry 5? Stinger. Whatever. No, no, not a stinger. I you go you go up into the air, I guess I don't remember, whatever. But you rock it up into the air and s- attack up and then like you, if you if you hit the attack button again, you shoot down and basically what is an air stinger? Like to the ground. The problem is it's not a straight down, it's like it's at a hard like acute angle. So you most of the time I know what you're I know what you're talking about. I just don't remember the name of it. (laughs) It's a very attractive angle, to be fair. It's really good. But yeah, you can like you can recover with the wire. You can jump up to things and find your way. Thank you, Mesa. (laughs) Oh, I get it. No, no, no. I thought you were. I was like, what? Like it's a small size? Like what? What are you talking about? I was like, oh no, more literal. Okay, literal is fine. Acute angle. Yeah. Yeah. I don't um, remember the degrees. What do you want from? Me? I think um, I think that's probably going to go ahead and do it for this episode, though. Yeah. Um, I want to give a big shout out to everyone that's been on the show. So thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Mesa. Thank you, Blaine, and thank you, Sylvia, for coming on. Hell I appreciate yeah. it. Um, also, also big shout out to everyone that came and hung out. Uh, thanks to everyone in chats. Um, big shout out to my patrons, Sly and Rama Nomad. Uh, thank you, Rama Nomad, especially for these for those uh, questions we did at the beginning. That was a fun time. Oh um, yeah, I love questions. Does anyone want to go ahead and shout out their socials or anything they're doing, or maybe oh, even okay. final word on a statement? Final word. Sorry, final mm-hmm. statement on any topic. <laughs> uh, you can uh, follow me at Nexus Requiem on Twitter. Sometimes I say funny stuff. Sometimes I stream on Twitch, and I'll tweet it in there. Uh, if you play on the Ultra server on the Primal Data Center of Final Fantasy XIV, you can DM me if you want to join my free company. Uh, I'll get you in there. We like to have fun. We're very accepting of like new people and stuff. We like carrying people through old content and stuff like that. So if you're ever interested, let me know, and I'll get you in there. Um, I don't Ultros. know. You think? Oh, you yeah, are? Well, if you ever get back yeah. into the game, let me oh. know. I can get you in there, no problem. Thank let me you. think. Is there anything else I want to plug? Um, I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. You can watch uh, the first episode of Common Rider Double for free on the Tokusatsu app. You should what? check it out. It's a pretty cool show. I think they have Ryuki on there too. That one's pretty good. Common Rider Double is the only one I've watched at any length. It's a I really good it. one. That one's good, and Kabuto's good too. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Stop um, scalping my Transformers. Yes, please stop doing that. <laughs> Scalpers go die. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not taking that back. Um, <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter. Morbid curiosity spelled weird. It's on the screen. You see it. Um, uh, I, I, I used to drop a lot of hot takes. Now I just try to say nuanced shit and like spread good word about shit that needs to be spread. Um, and talk about video games and other shit. It's it's a big mess of things. Um, fucking statements. You was you wanted like an ending of a statement. Um, only if you statement. want. Stop coddling cis men, please. Exactly. Just it. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of having to fucking see people be like, oh, but this guy didn't know, and this guy doesn't know, and half the time it's a fucking forty-something-year-old man who should have known better ten years ago. This is not a specific like thing. I'm sub verbally subtweeting. This is literally just I'm tired of cis men existing and being idiots. Me too. I want them to not be Damn. idiots if they're going to continue to exist. No offense, Jose Damn. and Mesa. Damn, I am offended. Oh shit! I'm going. I'm gonna. Sit. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't, I don't Sis, there's no more. There's no true. more to this. Oh wait! I've come <laughs> to the end of this joke. It is over. Oh, oh, shit, I almost <laughs> forgot. I can't wait for Deep Down to come out. <laughs> I forgot what Deep Down is. Uh, don't worry about it. It's not going to come uh, out. Cis hats are truly the most oppressed class in all society. Only next Absolutely. to gamers. Yeah. Mm. Those poor gamers. They're oppressed. Yeah. Bro, they're raising prices, bro. $70? Come on. Shit. That's a war okay. crime right there. See, okay. so these canals now are blocked just... up. I can't get my damn PS5. Okay, you're now you're baiting me with that $70 comment. Though, I actually <laughs> do have to say about that, but I'm not going to. Oh, of course. Oh, of course. They could all, easily could have eaten that, but whatever. Yeah, it's Sarah. You it's, it's, give... it's, it's lost. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah. Nothing. I honestly, I don't have anything. I'm sorry. I'm tired. All right. Um, (laughs) Yeah, we're all we're all we're all winding down. You can catch the uh, podcast here on Sundays at 6:30 p.m. PST. Roughly, typically tend to go on at 6:45 as we're getting ready. Um, You can catch that on podcast services as well as on YouTube. It's full episodes and individually cut up segments. Um, I'm trying to stick to a stricter um, stream schedule for streaming games Um, that is still subject to change on a weekly basis just because of the nature of my job. But um, I will I will post on both Twitch as well as on Twitter and I'll have it as a pinned tweet uh, what the exact schedule for that uh, upcoming week will be. Um, We be playing Evil Within and then Demon Souls. So that's about Hell that yeah. for me, I guess. Hey, look at that game. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah. Ne- Nexus can come laugh at me at how bad mm-hmm. I am. Sure. If you're ever uh, streaming on like Wednesday or Thursday, I'll join. Sure. I like that game. A little bit. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, Don't forget to support your locals. Yep. <laughs> uh, with that, thanks everyone for hanging out, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. 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 Beep 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 beep. <laughs>